Game one Arabia, I, I think people watch a lot of Arabia. Let's find out in game one how good these players are, what Civ preferences there's gonna, they're going to end up having. Uh, I, I definitely foresee Malians for Alfred the Alpaca. I think Malians feels like a natural pick there, but I'm getting ahead of myself, and my <laughs> goodness. So uh, here we are, ladies and gents. Welcome to game one between Alfred the Alpaca and Jan Zizka. This is a crazy one in terms of the heroes, uh, kind of getting tabs on... What, who, what people preferred, who they were rooting for hero-wise. And I think these two heroes might have been the most popular. We have Portuguese for Alfred the Alpaca in the red. We've got Vietnamese for Jan Zizka in the blue. And uh, very rare that we would get it the neutral map to be Arabia. So both players very comfortable on this map, I would think, Ornlo. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, everybody in this tournament is comfortable on Arabia. It's just... Anyone who's played a ton of AoE2 probably has a lot of experience with this map. And it's just, I think, still a good, nice sort of neutral starting ground for game number one. And already we have two very solid Arabia civs in this and very much sort of the, the new school civs. Civs that weren't typically popular on Arabia, but thanks to a lot of different buffs, both feel very flexible in what they can go for. Yeah, Portuguese, they have the cheaper gold units and they also get a bit of wood from the berries. So I think those bonuses there... They work out quite nicely. Now, there are some players who don't like the the early mill with Portuguese. I'll talk about that if we see it, but that could be a slight indicator. There's really like two sieves, I would say, that are really good at going double gold composition. So a mix of crossbows and knights. Portuguese is one of the best ones. And then uh, Chinese would be the other. So I think Alfred the Alpaca, clearly a player who doesn't like to play through a lot of counter units. So this maybe uh, eliminates a player like MBL, for example, who likes to make a lot of skirmishers and spears. I would assume, again, as we expected, this is a player who loves to be aggressive on Arabia. Absolutely. Uh, I'd also add Malians to that list of civs that love their double gold army compositions, and it's a civ we True. see on this map plenty in this tournament. So yep. I, th I still think that both of these players still have every option available to them. Vietnamese, of course, they are an archer sieve, but they can go for cavalry just fine. Uh, they don't really have the best monks ever, missing redemption, so maybe that could be an area that uh, Alfred can try to exploit if it comes into like a lot of cavalry and monk play in the mid-game. But economically, Vietnamese are just so smooth. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think um, in terms of which I prefer here, I can't really pick one. I think they're both really close. Um, I think if the the Vietnamese have a greater ability to play in towards the counter units we mentioned, so playing in towards Skirmisher uh, and Pike mixed in with their normal comp can be really strong. And we'll see if that ends up happening. I, I asked production to show this to people because this <laughs> was on my Twitter this morning. Uh, the who is Salim the Grim? And then thank you very much uh, for that right there. I mean, that that is a lot of detail. <laughs> I don't know how... You were able to do that, but that was hilarious. Slim the Grim, unfortunately, out. But uh, make sure to send your tweets in. I don't know if you're going to be able to do an alpaca on your finger, but, uh, you know, I'm not sure if that's going to be a trend either, but send your tweets in. We'll possibly show them on the broadcast. All right, that was pretty great. And already, something perhaps a little bit indicative here of Jan Jishka's play style. They picked a lot of aggressive maps, but that's a pretty early wall off. You're already starting to get yeah. the side of your base uh, protected. And maybe that's somebody who, okay, you want to pick the more aggressive maps, but you want to make sure you're safe getting into them. Absolutely, yeah. I, I think it's really smart walling, though. It's not excessive. Uh, we're not seeing the big attempt to full wall the other side. I think if we start to see that, well, we're seeing it now. Then that definitely makes me think it's a player who might be a little fearful of some aggression from the opponent. Alfred the Alpaca shows up. You know what's, what's interesting to me? is I see quite a few uh, indications of Hart from the draft. And, and Hart is from Peru. Uh, everyone <laughs> calls him the Llama. So I think it'd be crazy if Hart, and if this ends up being Hart or whatever, obviously very early, but Hart of all people would end up being the alpaca here. <laughs> well, the, the lore certainly checks out there. And if anything Hidden Cup is doing, it is making everything as lore accurate as possible. <laughs> um, but we have Feudalage <laughs> on the way now for both players. Already, okay, 20 pop up here for Alfred the Alpaca. Everything seems perfectly fine and standard. Maybe just a scout opening. I don't think I see any villagers on gold yet. But Jan Zizka, that is 22 pop. T90, you've been around for a while. How often do we see 22 pop up on Arabia these days? 
Yeah, I was gonna say, is this 2017? In 2017, yeah, know, it man. would be. It it would make a lot of sense. Um, but I I guess Jan Jishka, your first game in what will be a very important series, wants to play as safe as possible and. I also think that what you can do here is you could play in towards fast eco upgrades and adapting. So as apparently it's possible the stream is dropped. I think yeah. we would need an F5 from people to refresh. I'm going to assume that things will come back there at some point and people are hearing us. But we'll continue on here. It's going to be scouts, uh, sorry, archers from Alfred that possibly try and punish the walls. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Scouts, normally, they don't love facing walls because, well, scouts can't shoot over walls or run over them. Archers, though, to me, especially like 20 pop archers, it's not like the 18 pop archers that like we're sort of seeing in team games on flank. This just feels like a very safe approach, but two different ways of doing that. And that is just 20 pop archers. I don't want to die to any early militia shenanigans. And then on the other side, you have Zhishka saying, I'm just going to go full wall and probably just skirm spearmen. Yeah, Scout did run underneath the TC there from Alfred, so he gets to take a peek to see what's happening. Jan Zizka has no clue what his opponent's doing, but he knows that Scout is a bit weak now, so he might actually bring a Scout all the way home. And, and and I'm like, I'm definitely seeing your more standard aggressive Arabia player in Alfred, and Zizka, a player who might be considered the underdog if we knew who these players were, based on the opening. Um, or at least is just a greedy player, like... Uh, you know, an MBL, maybe a Doubt, maybe a Yo, for example. I could see Yo walling up a lot. Whereas some players are like Alfred Ornlu, and they just want to play open the whole time. Yeah, just very sort of standard play, I think we could say, from Alfred the Alpaca. Jan Zizka, it's not like it's anything completely out there. I mean, you're still just sort of getting yourself defended. That early horse collar is going to be a nice touch, as that's not something Alfred the Alpaca was able to pick up. But this feels like a game that's very much going to be, okay, I just don't want to die in Feudal Age. Let's make it to Castle Age. That's when we can really start to expand out on the map. I, uh, again, paying very close attention to what people are saying. And we have people going to games from players and looking at their first and second farm position. It has gotten that detailed. And uh, I'm looking at the farms now and the farm setup. Now, maybe I'm not one to speak, but I, I feel <laughs> like the farm setup is actually very clean from both. Those farms there, very well placed, positioned towards the mill here. So just, just things to think about because some players aren't as known for it. Obviously, right now, you would expect them to be fairly efficient, but... The skirms are moving forward for Jan Jishka, and Alfred the Alpaca's scout is currently in his base. Normally, you want that scout to be able to see the skirms are going forward in the first place, but also uh, to, to push back those skirmishers. So I can actually see this being really annoying for Alfred to deal with. Yeah, I mean, on the one hand, you can see what's going on in your opponent's base, but on the other hand, you don't really have any heads up that those skirmishers are coming forward, and it is a no-fletching v. no-fletching situation, and those extra HP Vietnamese skirmishers, they can just be so annoying to take down in Feudal Age, you just get more bang for your buck with each individual unit, it's great in low numbers, and looks like that scout has gone down as well, and right now, is this just, I would say, an awkward spot for Alfred as he's getting his berries harassed? Yeah, it definitely is, because you don't want to go into scouts here if your opponent is Walt. Um, you're, you're always very resistant to that. And Jan Jishka, I was wondering if he was ever going to be able to take his gold, because he walled without his gold. His gold positions are actually awful here. But he uses wood lines very nicely, and this is a lot of confidence here from Jan Jishka. Getting Fletching now himself, Alfred the Alpaca does kill a Spearman. But certainly feels like, you know, losing out in the berries, losing out in some of this... Just, just the idle time that's being forced right now by Jan Zizka against Alfred is going to make this... The type of game that Alfred was hoping to avoid here. Yeah, because as you're saying, if you're transitioning into scouts at this point, on the one hand, they're not going to be able to break, break into your opponent's space because they're walled. But on the other hand, it's just going to delay your castle age time. And as we're seeing, it's not like either player, I think, wants to invest too heavily into Feudal Age, but you can still see Alfred biting the bullet there. He's going to be training some scouts from that stable, as you just need something to deal with those Vietnamese skirmishers that are currently giving you a bad headache. These guys are really good on Arabia. This micro is really smooth. I know Alfred's in kind of a pickle, it feels like, but he hasn't lost many archers, and he continues to micro away. The scouts are going to be kind of a surprise here. I also love how Jan Zizka has made a ton of spearmen, too. Like, he knows, like, what are you going to do to counter me? You're going to add scouts. Even though I don't see it, I know because I'm experienced. And so there's always seems to be spearmen around right now. 
And it's just going to make it difficult for this archer and scout combination to, to find the engagements. But maybe I spoke too soon because he did pick off a spearman there with the archers. But oh man, now, now the archers have to pay a price. Absolutely. Those skirmishers can just run around with impunity. We're looking at 12 skirms to 9 archers, so already those numbers aren't too happy for Ooh. Alfred the Alpaca. But with the power of the market, anything is possible, and that anything is going to be Castle Age. It's on the way for red. Getting some knights out would be absolutely enormous. Any sort of leftover ranged units you have in Feudal Age can easily deal with a couple spearmen, and from there, it's just going to be all about mowing down those skirmishers. But that villager, definitely not coming home for Christmas. Yeah, that villager goes down. And this seems to be the position that Jishka does not want to give up. We do have the archers actually leaving right now. And so if you're in Jan Jishka's position, you have to be like, I haven't seen those archers in a bit. They might be coming towards me. I actually really like how Alfred has played this. Again, for a lot of players, this would be much worse. Has plenty of archers in queue. Seems to be sneaking with those archers right now. But earlier in the game, I, I was expecting four or five archers to go down against the skirms. He only lost like two this whole game, which is impressive against this many skirmishers. Yeah, and I think another thing to point out is that these players, obviously we, we're seeing on, play out, the micro is fantastic on both sides. But on the other hand, both players had one second idle TC time until they were trying Crazy. to click up to Castle Age and just waiting for the, the resources to come in there. So these guys, like they are clean with their execution early on, and that just bodes well for the quality of set that we're about to see. Yeah, absolutely. And again, in Hidden Cup, guys, random seating. This could be anybody. This could be whoever you consider to be the top two players. This could be them right here. We do not know. There have been instances in the past where there have been a really big matchup in the first round, like Hidden Cup 4. Uh, I think the biggest one was probably Hera against Tato round one. And Tato wasn't even seen. Both players weren't actually seen to be as good as they are now. They were seen, still seen as very good, but could happen. <laughs> we could be looking at the same matchup right now, Orlu. Absolutely possible, but Castle Age, it's coming in now for our blue player, and those archers queuing up are really interesting to me because we've seen Vietnamese go cav archers so often these days. We've seen Vietnamese go cav archers more than Huns go cav archers. It's been pretty wild. But Jan Zishka is going to be someone who's going to opt for the more uh, ground-based approach, just going to lean more into the crossbowmen, whereas Alfred the Alpaca going to be doing the same thing as we're talking about T90, knights and crossbowmen, double gold army composition. Yeah, here comes out for the alpaca. Nice crossbow mass. I love how Zizka has placed house walls behind all the palisades because that, that would be the vulnerable area. It's also fascinating to me how he didn't even tower here, but sneaky crossbows come in from the right side, and you wouldn't have expected this if you were Jan Zizka, and he doesn't lose as much as you would expect here. He's going to get Elite Skirm and Bodkin, but he doesn't have the upgrades yet. The scouts are getting some nice hits. Micro is of utmost importance. And it feels like Jishka will actually be able to defend this. We'll lose a couple extra skirms, but he builds his TC, which Alfred the Opaka isn't doing. And beautiful defense overall there from Jishka. I mean, seriously, you show up at your opponent's base, you have maybe 12 or so crossbowmen on the high ground right next to their gold mine, and zero villagers go down. Like, what the heck? That is so crazy. He actually, now we have the extra wait, so he didn't lose in. any. Yeah, I just looked at the Eco KD and assumed that he lost some, but he actually used his scout to kill two villagers on the other side of the map while also defending. What in the world was that? <laughs> some really high level AOE2 play. Jan Zizka also leaning into the strength of Vietnamese, getting really fast eco upgrades. We're looking at Bosaw, Heavy Plow, and Handcart when Alfred the Alpaca only has Bidax and Horse Collar. That already feels like a really strong spot for our blue player. Yeah, and this is this was now where you're under a bit of pressure if you're out for the Apaka to get more damage. This combination of crossbow and skirmisher, I think, is a good decision for Shishka because the if you just had skirm, you're more vulnerable against the knights and even the siege. At least with good micro, you can use crossbows to take out the siege. But siege is still potentially a problem. And again, we'll find out how good Shishka is because the siege could be a surprise. And speaking of surprises, the crossbows are there, but Jishka reacts immediately, Orlu. Yeah, th this is already giving me some Hera vibes, right? Just the passive play, the excellent unit control, just playing that more defensive approach and not taking any unnecessary risks already. Yep. Just such clean play, and he's only going to be getting more ahead going forward. Oh man, it's got to be frustrating for Alfred the Alpaca too, because you lose some weak villagers there on the wood line. 
and that was just like some leftover uh, weak villagers from the feudal age attack which you thought you had defended from and how many times have we seen this from the world's very best where they they defend from an attack that many people would die to and then they are booming away while also counter-attacking this is an important moment for Jishka, though. While he is knocking on the door, he does need to defend from Siege for the first time. Yeah, and that could be a little bit tricky. Of course, no redemption monks for the Vietnamese. University at the front feels a little bit weird. But yeah, those mangonels are going to be coming in. And you, we are going to need to see some excellent micro. There are, however, some tiny little hills that you can make excellent use of in this defense for Jan Jishka. Yeah, and Jishka certainly trying that. Got to be careful. I think his own Siege Workshop could make sense, too. He's still knocking on the door. The Spearmen here are helping batter away, and, and Alfred the Alpaca is losing some vils. There is a Siege Workshop in defense for Jishka, which is a good move. I think abandoning the Ballistics idea is the play here when your opponent has Siege. And it's a nice vil lead here for Jishka. If he defends from this, it should be great, but he is pop-capped pretty badly, so the Mangonel is just now on the way, and he has to leave his gold entirely. Yeah, that's not too pretty. And of course, the gold is the main concern because all three of his golds are in the front of his base. And uh, well, it's difficult to make a bunch of archers if you have no gold income. So Manganel's already going to start to thwack away at those villagers. That said, nothing's actually dying and Jan Jishka is still going to get that Manganel out. Yeah, also, uh, Jishka's never come home. He's continued to push forward. He's been able to shift back onto his gold. The way he positioned his TC was very good. I love what Alpaca's doing here. Alfred says, I get it's bad for me, but it's going to be worse if I do not continue to focus. And he split micros, and he's pushing down that TC. And overall, I still think, like, Siege is the most important thing here. And with three Manganels to one right here, Ishka could just be moments away from losing his TC. Absolutely. And if you lose that TC, you lose all of your gold income and you're going to be in a horrible spot to try and make any sort of defense happen coming forward. So this is an absolute priority to make it happen. There are four Magnels to one. Like you're saying, there is a second one coming in and it looks like Alfred's looking to change the angle of his attack. Can it go after the archery range a little bit here? But these Magnel hits are going to be absolutely critical, T90. Yeah, this is two players who love Arabia, right? We, we saw game one Arabia. We said, oh, it made it through the bands. Clearly, these guys are going to be very good, and they're playing amazing here so far. But again, a, a, a ridiculous eco lead for Jan Jishka, actually. Almost an unbelievable eco lead, but then there's unbelievable micro from both players here with the Siege. And Alfred the Alpaca refuses to lose his Siege. Same with Jan Jishka. The micro continues from both. And that villager coming forward right now is incredibly important for Alfred the Alpaca. It needs to repair those Meganels. Especially as you are working on one TC, every single unit is absolutely critical. Now, in all of that fighting, there were a lot of crossbows that were uh, lost, and the Maganel goes down there, so this is already looking like... Okay, Jan Jiska's looking to defend this. Both players have excellent micro, but Jan Jiska feels like he's just going to eventually wear down this push of Alfred's. Yeah, and Alfred was just so uncertain about pushing the TC because of the amount of resistance that Jiska had. Jishka still has that other army on the other side, of course. Finally, Jan Jishka lands a shot, and Alfred's got to be thinking, what in the world is this? I mean, that's a nice attack rounds, but a 40-villager lead on Arabia for Jan Jishka right now. Yeah, this is getting out of control really quickly. You've got ballistics on the way. You still have way more range units here for Jan Jishka. Closing in on double the vills, a larger and better army. I mean, it feels like... Alfred didn't do anything horrendously wrong, but just the greed and the defense from Jan Jishka seem way too much for Alfred to overcome in this game. Yeah, and very few players can play with this level of greed and then have it and get away with it, right? A lot of players get punished if they go for that much eco. Not Jan Jishka. An amazing start to the series for him. Continues to move into awkward positions with confidence, does run directly into an attack round but still gets the kill and splits away from it here. And this is just highlight city for the crossbow micro. And again, it, it, you know, you think Alfred the Opaka needs to find good engagements and he's just not able to. No, and it's, it, it's just tough, right? Because he's not doing anything like wrong. It's just Jan Jishka's playing about as close to perfect as we could ask for. The yeah, micro is on point, the macro is on point. He's getting his upgrades. He's making sure he's playing with safety. And he's going to click up to Imp in not too long. This is crazy. Yeah, it's, this is insane. I'd make predictions right now. 
Because I had said, I wasn't sure if we saw Hera, I wasn't sure if we saw Leary. I'm more certain we didn't see Leary so far in Hidden Cup. I think we've got Leary as one of these two players, could be either. Wouldn't surprise me if we actually had a Hera-Leary Hera matchup, maybe a Heart mixed in, who's an incredible Arabia player. Maybe a Sebastian, a player from the qualifier who hasn't been guessed that frequently, who's also really good with these types of plays. But Jan Jishka is uh, playing incredible on his way to Imp, drops that castle on the front, protects his golds. And I guess for Alfred, you just need really good seed shots right now. And you got to hope that you could find some good engagements here. I just don't know about that, T90. I mean, you've got the gold safe now. you got another town center on the way. You're closing in on Imperial Age. And you can just go for your Rattan archers that are going to do so well versus Crossbowmen. You already have plus two defense. You're taking one damage a hit from Crossbowmen. So you don't need many Rattan archers at all to trade mm -hmm. super effectively versus the Crossbowmen. And this game just seems all but over. Yeah, you got do have a counter attack here from Alpaca. No, um, no ballistics, unfortunately. So not getting the hits that he would want. But I, I'm with you. I think Rats and Archer is just the perfect unit right now. And you, you can't really do too much wrong when you are ahead by 50 villagers. And, and <laughs> these eco upgrades. <laughs> it's, yeah, he's collected it's like, like 8,000 more resources here. Yeah, and I think just stylistically, if you compare Vasco da Gama to Jan Jishka, which, you know, most people were saying were Hera, Vasco da Gama was much more, I'm going to hit you in the face with my perfect execution. This is oh. way more passive. That is what you're looking for. I mean, if you're going to make a comeback in this game, that's how you can start to do that. But still, you've got to overcome Imperial Age and now free conscription on top of everything else. Yeah. You know, the more I think about it, I mean, obviously we're going to see more games here. Upgrades need to fly in from Jishka and Alfred the Alpaca, as I'm sure many players have felt in the first round, he's got to be sitting here like, oh, God, not me, right? Like, oh, no, <laughs> like, not not me. Why me, random bracket? Why am I up against Jan Jishka? Why wasn't it somebody else? This quality is just, it's just obvious, and you can feel it on the other side, I'm sure. Absolutely. I mean, it just everything that Alfred is doing just isn't quite enough, even though the execution early on and the defense was very good. It's just not quite there. You got Crossbone going across the map. There is absolutely nothing to defend here. Those Vils have to flee for their lives. You can use Faderias to make up for a little bit of that build discrepancy with Portuguese, but you still just have such a big army number difference to overcome and that tech disadvantage. Yeah, and it's game one of the series. You know, Alfred's like wants to get warmed up a little bit, maybe wants to try and finish this off. Maybe doesn't believe that the opponent has 160 eco. Maybe in normal games, probably thinking the opponent only has like you know 130 total pop but Jan Jishka insane play on Arabia here and uh just really made no mistakes that entire game yeah I mean he trained half the cross moment of his opponent he just never took bad fights he got his eco going when he needed it to and there we just can't really even look to any of the real mistakes that Jan Jishka has made that was elite level Arabia right there but we have plenty more maps. Now, Alfred the Alpaca has drafted some maps that will be very different from Arabia. And now we'll get to see how prepared Jan Jishka is for those maps. But here's just a little highlight. You know, again, map-wise, I would have looked at the map and said that Jishka had the worst map because of the gold situation. But he just flooded spears and skirms forward like a madman. And then protected his gold nicely in Castle Age, which was really the key and. We said it all, Ornlu, and now we have to look over at Alfred the Alpaca's side uh, and, and see what he has for maps. He's got High Tides, Evacuation, and Mud Flow. If I were Alpaca, or Alfred, sorry, I don't know why I keep calling him <laughs> Alpaca. Um, if I were Alfred, I would probably prefer to, to go to Evacuation because High Tides and Mud Flow feel more standard than Evacuation, and, and maybe getting Evacuation uh, and a win on the board would build up some confidence. Game number two, and after losing that first game, Alfred the Alpaca wanted to go to Bay. He's in the north of the map playing as the Italians, which we expected, Ornlu. And then we have the Bengali pick for Jan Jishka, which is ringing a bell for me. I do remember another very strong player picking the Bengalis on this map before. And I believe that was Gajamata, because I think we casted that together. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was against the Dravidians with a really weird castle age push. They didn't do anything. 
So that's yes. already interesting. But on the other hand, Alfred picked his opponent's home map. Unless I'm very much mistaken, Bay was Zishka's map. Yeah. So already, despite losing game number one, he's just going to run it back to what his opponent picked. Yeah. Italians was a relatively early pick. I think the Italian win rate has been really solid. Uh, it, it suits the map because you can take some of the water aspects on <clears throat> Bay, uh, and then you can transition <laughs> with the cheaper age ups to the next ages. And uh, very frequently, it goes late game where we've seen the Genoese crossbow be dominant. And like I think Italians are um, incredibly flexible. A lot of players might consider them just a water civilization, but they still have great arbalest line. They have better arbalest line than most civs. They have the Genoese crossbow. They have fully upgraded Hussar. I mean, it's a civilization, to me, it feels very smooth when you play it. Well, it's a Civ who is entirely made up of discounts. So yes, of course, it's going to feel smooth to play, right? Literally all of their yep. bonuses are discounts. And you also have a broad tech tree. So they can work on basically any map type. Of course, going to lean more into that water style of play with uh, those water discounts. But still, on a hybrid map like Bay slash Pants, it is going to be very clean. So the Bengalis are an interesting choice here because this is a map that normally turns into like Hussar spam combined with something else. And they don't have that. But what they do have, is they have incredible economy. Maybe one of the best economies in the game. You get the additional villagers from your TCs when you arrive to the next age. So that's just a bonus to villagers right there. Plus the ship regeneration could be helpful in this map. Um, I just... With how Jan Zizka played game one, he seemed very happy to just play defensive. Bay can sometimes pan out like that. So I could see an eco and water approach initially for Jan Zizka into expanding into a boom, be the play. And I think Alfred the Opaka, you got to respect that a little bit. You got to think, do I really want to allow the Bengalis to boom here? And I don't know the answer. Maybe it could be good. It's tricky. It, it really is tricky because Bengalis are so well equipped to defend against any sort of castle age pressure with their excellent monks. You just mix in some trash units or archers as needed. So it feels like the onus is on you, Alfred the Alpaca, to really win water early on because that's going to be mm -hmm. the best way you can set yourself up to keep pace with Bengalis in the mid game as we really haven't seen a ton of aggression pan out in castle age on this map so far this tournament. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. I feel like I, have you ever seen elite Genoese crossbowman against elite elephant archer? Of course I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, yeah. Who wins? It, <laughs> uh, so the Genoese perform better than regular archers, but remember that Bengalis also take less bonus damage um, with their elephant units, and you have very high pierce armor. So the Bengali yeah. elephant archers are still absolutely population efficient, although the Genoese are going to be better than maybe you, you would expect at first. Makes sense. I wonder if this is going to be a futile contest here for Jan Zizka. Both players pushing in a lot of their deer. Alfred the Apaka is on the way to the next stage already. Uh, with Loom coming in, I think Jan Zizka will decide to compete with water. But this build from Alfred the Apaka, are you kidding me? He's got 17 vills, zero fishing ships. Now, one's on the way here, but this is completely streamlined to win that water as fast as possible. Yeah, and we'll have to see if the second dock comes down, too, because this is really, really fast. And look at that, only one vill on food, and that's the one fishing ship. So this is like, we are really leaning into the aggressive hybrid map aspect of this map. I mean, other hybrid maps, you still see some sort of play on the land, but the rush distance is relatively far, and looks like Villager is going to come down for dock number two. Alfred wants to win water, and I love this approach versus Bengalis and versus Janjishka. Now, everyone, just look at the eco count right now. Pay attention to that. Because some people might be thinking, faster is better. Well, why, why doesn't everyone just go up faster? Well, because you have fewer villagers working this whole time. So you actually brought in less resources. And then the Mingalis will still get those plus two bills when they make it to the next stage. So basically what it boils down to, this build, it really has to find some success. Because if it doesn't, if, these guys, if this ends up even in some way... I, I would think there would be huge problems economically for Alfred the Alpaca in the long run as Alfred sees the dock, is hoping to delay the dock as much as possible. 
Yeah, I love the, the fact that Alfred has his scout right there, but so does Jan Jishka. Both players playing very smart and very safe, and they are both going to contest water. We have four fire galleys queued up, and another sort of incidental effect of this build is that you can't even get double bit axe. And when you go up faster than your opponent, getting double bit axe is one way you can sort of help smooth the difference in economy because your villagers will be more efficient than your opponents, but you don't even have that in this situation, and that's already yep. a five bill lead for Jan Jishka. Not to mention the, the the inefficiency aspect of the one lumber camp over time. But, you know, if you kill the four fishing ships, if you dominate the water where you can fish, I could see how this could pay off and what Alfred is thinking here. And as long as Double Bid X is researched at some point, you'll begin to catch up. You still have the cheap fishing ships available for the Italians. Don Jishka doesn't know what hit him right now. He's like, are you kidding me? Like, and he's just sailing around with his fishing ships. <laughs> Normally you have time to save these, but I, I don't think he's going to be able to save these at all. Oh, actually, yeah, I might be already wrong. you have a demo yeah. queued up behind this. There aren't even any vills nearby to repair, and absolutely, Alfred the Alpaca blindsiding Jan Jishka. I mean, who wants to have a giant alpaca run at them at full speed? Not Jan Jishka, yeah, that's blind... for sure. Isn't it like unfair to blindside the guy who already has one eye? Is that like, isn't that well, like I a mean... war crime or something? I've... Come on, you supported Celine the Grim. Somebody who's called the Grim in the 16th century, you know they've got war crimes for days. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, that's a fair point. I just thought it sounded cool. And, ooh, a Alfred, he stacked his um, his fires in a choke point there. Did get hit by the demo, but does have two fishing ships working, unlike his opponent right now. Thank you for the alpaca stats uh, production. That is very, very helpful here. It's fun. What do you, yeah. what do you, <laughs> Always what do, you like do if you're just, uh, vampires, right? <laughs> you don't want the opponent to fish boom, but you also don't want to like invest too much into a losing area, which is what the water is right now. What's your thought on what Jishka's approach could be here? It's interesting, right? Because he only has six fills on food. He is nowhere near Castle Age. You don't want to invest into a losing cause. But Jan yep. Jishka still thinks that they can make something happen. There's also a demo raft waiting in the wings. That fishing ship really wants to fight <laughs> that dock. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be a fire galley. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's relatable because it probably was just the rally point for the ship. <laughs> now, a lot of players will repair their weak ships, which Alfred the Alpaca hasn't done. And there, you, you just got to know, if you see a dock like that, that there is going to be a demo in there. And I think we're going to see a big moment here in a moment where Jan Shishka moves out and tries to retake water and not allow the Italian player to get a big fish boom. Yeah, and it, I think that Alfred was assuming that his opponent wasn't going to keep investing into water at that point as he just lost so thoroughly. Uh, but Jan Shishka said no, and I just love the precision in Jan Shishka's unit control. He moved his fire ship behind the corner of the dock. And for those who don't know, because fire ships technically have 0% accuracy, they can't shoot over anything. And that includes docks well, or other ships. Demo incoming gets an okay hit right there. And that one does not. Really great control for Zhishka. Now, Res Collected saying it's ahead for Zhishka right now. He does have two minutes of vital TC. That certainly is not good. But if a demo pops out for either player right now and connects, this could lead to one of them winning the water. Now, I need to eventually find a moment here we need to see did alfred actually see his opponent has a barracks and an archer range it's kind of hard to look at that when we're looking at this as jan jishka retakes water but like if you don't know your opponent has a barracks you're definitely not going to know there's archers on the way and i could see jan jishka still being competitive on water and then killing villagers with those archers soon Absolutely, and look at this. I mean, Jan Jishka is just killing everything. His unit control is excellent. He just has more stuff than his opponent. And those mm -hmm. demo ships finding basically no value is a massive issue. Archers unscouted as well. And I mean, even if they were scouted, you still don't have anything right now to do anything to stop this. This is Jan Jishka saying, no, 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 no. I am not losing water. Yeah, and this is, this is again, an example, I think, for this matchup where Clearly, Alfred the Opaka is very talented, but Jan Jishka it just has this inevitability about him where he's always going to have that next step. Now, we'll see what happens with these two archers. It is just two, but he's done a great job to ensure that the Italians didn't get the, the lead with the fishing ships. And there go the archers. And good luck walling it out. Like, you're going to wall towards the water? You wall towards the water and your opponent is winning the water. It's not going to work out here.
you could actually see... Well, maybe the archers won't want to run alongside the dock. But they, they should be able to find an opportunity here, Orlu. Yeah, I mean, the quick gate there is nice. There's an archery range being rushed up on the other side as well. Ooh. They're trying to trap the archers. I Ooh. mean... I... The, okay. the policy gates are pretty low HP. Fletching's about to yeah. be in as well, but... I mean, we need to see some skirms coming out. There isn't one on the way just yet. That's at a market from Alfred the Alpaca. It could bring him to Castleage quite soon, and that is exactly what's incoming. But if, if these archers get in, everything dies. I know it's just three archers, but you really need to, to make sure this gate stays up. Really well played from Alfred the Alpaca. To ensure the gate is still there, it's actually quite weak here. It's at 73% and it's almost down, so he needs to send another vill there. Maybe he's hoping the one skirm he has is enough here? But I think Jan Jishka is gonna could take this opportunity and run with it. There are two weak archers there. It's actually, an archer for Alpaca, and we see another <laughs> gate for Alpaca. So he seems very comfortable with the traps. But who's actually trapped here? It looks like Alpaca will defend from this. And well played, Alfred. I'm impressed. I mean, that was about as perfect as you could do. I mean, on the one hand, you're going for the quick gates, which are in themselves impressive. But on the other yeah. hand, you deleted them every single time. There was no gate that was destroyed. You are saving as much wood as possible. And on top of that, you focus down the low HP archers right away. Still, though, you got a lot of archers in your base. The army is 10 to 4. And so far, Janjushka has uh, been very reliably taking good fights with his units. But I mean, this is good from Alpaca as well. Yeah, I, I think the defense from Alfred is good. I do wonder what this turns into in the Castle Age now. The walls are up for Jan Jishka. There's going to be no potential for counterattacking here for Alfred the Alpaca. We have another gate. Nice little trap attempt. I love how Jan Jishka is using the minimum range of his opponent's skirms to his advantage here. He's being incredibly annoying. Like, I imagine <laughs> Alfred is, is pissed at the moment. He's like, come on, dude. Like, these archers are going to die. Just let me kill them. Stop being a nerd. Finally gets the job done. But again, Orlu, to my point, it's like one player has control of water with fishing ships again. That would be Jan Jishka. That player is going to be in Castle Age at a very similar time. Gets two more villagers as a reward for making it to the next stage with the Bengalis. It does feel like Jan Jishka should be in a pretty good position to drop some town centers and maybe boom up. Yeah, and that's going to be the thing, right? Because although the villager count is only slightly in favor of Jan Jishka at this point... Alfred, I mean, he's got to make it to Castle Age. You have no real eco bonus to work with at this point. He's going to need to buy back some stone if he wants to go up to three TCs. And I could see a situation here where you're trying to push out onto the map with some archers, but you're just going to get overwhelmed by the light cap that Jan Jishka is going to be switching into. Yep. Uh, interesting stuff. It just makes me so, so happy to see people saying that these players are the same players every single freaking day, dude. It is like, <laughs> we're seeing the same rotation of the same five to six names flying through my chat. This is Hidden Cup for you, and it's just a reminder how good everybody is. But uh, according to viewers, this we only have five or six players playing in this tournament every single time we're casting a series. I love it. <laughs> well, chat's going to guess the players they know, so they're going to keep on guessing the players that they watch all the time, so can't blame yeah. chat for that as much as I like to. So... <laughs> Yeah, Siege Workshop coming in, and immediately we see that second TC on the way. Light Cav able to swoop around. You cannot fully wall this map, at least not to the edge of the water. And there's going to be the third TC for Alfred, so he's going to say, I'm not going to fall behind economically this game. I really like the Light Cav edition. I also like how Jan Jishka said, what does that wall do, bro? That does nothing. <laughs> I am into your eco, and I'm going to kill even more villagers. I mean, it's still just two Light Cav, but you could easily kill two or three villagers with this. And this is what you want on this map. And I remember initially I was thinking Bengalis don't really have the mobility. You can still play into Lightcap just fine. There's a weak villager. That's going to be a snipe for Jan Jishka. Very patient. And it, dude, like Jishka's living the dream right now. He sees crossbows, which should be advancing out across the map, being used defensively. It, it is the worst position you'd want to be in if you're out for the alpaca. And then you're trying to send other crossbows forward and you send them directly into light cav. That light cav still hasn't been killed. And Ganjishka yet again finding a sweet spot economically here, game two. Yeah, it's got more vills on food. I mean, it's a seven vill lead overall. Even with more idle time, just the Bengali eco being so superior to the Italian economy, it really makes a difference. 
and using the light cav you're fast you can try and keep your opponent on their side of the map and if you're playing bengalis in this sort of situation just buy time it's all about buying time and some players just insist on continuing to micro continuing to use these cav and that's what jishka is doing here looks like there is a wall and if it was going to attack the farm foundation now it's going to attack this vill and his opponent does realize, so see if the Lycav could get the snipe. Spears on the way, and the villager goes down and the Lycav gets through. Jan Jishka with another snipe with the Lycav. Oh man, that, this is just so annoying to see. I, I feel secondhand sadness for Alfred the Alpaca. He's got Bodkin on the way, only eight crossbowmen. Not going to get a whole lot accomplished, especially when your opponent has three siege units already. And they've got TC number four coming in for Jan Jishka, and this is looking pretty bad for Alfred. Finally, Lycav goes down. But yeah, I said coming into the day, I felt like we were missing a big piece of the puzzle. I felt like the story, at least from what people thought, wasn't adding up for me. And I, Jan Jishka might be one of those missing pieces. Maybe he's one of the players that's on the, the favorites overlay that will show in between games. But as the uh, Alpaca... As many fans out there, it seems, uh, right now he needs some energy. He needs some hope. I think we should applaud the Alpaca for staying in this. Like, the, the economic difference isn't that insane in terms of workers, but the res collected right now is growing and growing for Jan Chishka. Absolutely. And you can just see the difference already. Even though the vill count isn't that crazy in favor of Jan Chishka, He's ahead by, what, over 1,500 resources? That's just going to snowball even more. He's probably going to get a better Imperial Age time, and he can develop towards the Bengali army, which is a lot more expensive than what Italians tend to make. Yep. Siege also out and about right now. Alfred did see that with his spearmen, so the crossbows might be able to have an opportunity. This is just like Cav we're talking about. If this was knights, you wouldn't want to be advancing forward with these crossbows. But... We'll have to be careful. Fortunately for Alfred, the siege is missing him. And maybe Alfred could find an opportunity. There's a lot of villagers for Jan Jishka heading out towards that stone at the worst possible time. It does look like Jan Jishka notices this immediately, though. Does lose a monk. Will lose a villager. Nice counter raid here from Alfred the Alpaca. And if he can get through, this could get even worse. And all of a sudden, Alfred the Alpaca with a great opportunity. And this is going to be a whole lot more difficult to deal with than a few random light caps. Absolutely. This is exactly what we wanted to see from Alfred the Alpaca, just swooping around with those archers at an angle that you don't necessarily expect. And that's kind of what you can accomplish on a map like Bay, because there's so much... The direct path to your opponent is on one side of the map, and then you can just have all this area that you can go around that. And if you're working with mostly slow siege units that are going to be your power units at this point as Jan Shishka, then Ooh. if they're out of position, you're going to have a very bad time of things. Interesting grouping there from the crossbows. Lots of confidence to split them up. That's actually the ideal scenario here against Siege, by the way, because the Siege can only chase one group. So now you've split it up, and this group's going to get a kill, and the Manganel is trying to decide where it goes. The crossbows are on the other side, and Alfred the Alpaca is an amazing player himself. Great job from him. He will get hit now from Siege from the other side. <laughs> But the crossbows are still microing. Look at this guy go. He's still moving. He does have to react to this as well. So it feels like things could go wrong badly for both players. But these crossbows nerding out. Nice counter raid here from Alpha the Alpaca. Absolutely. This is something that he can do to try and keep himself in this game. He's adding his own fourth town center at this point. I just love the fact that he is splitting the crossbow, and that shows a lot of confidence in his unit control. Yes, the crossbowmen yeah. are going to die eventually, but that looks like a fantastic Manganel hit from the side for wow. Alfred the Alpaca. And suddenly, look at who's about to click up to Impty90. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, like I'm... It's the imp time right now, despite everything that's gone wrong right now for Alfred the Alpaca, that gives me some strong Leary vibes. I think a lot of players, things kind of fall apart. You don't still have that Arbalest window. Leary loves to have that Arbalest window. And he'll maybe, potentially, Alfred the Alpaca will have enough stone to drop a castle. Crossbow mass is pretty decent. I also loved how aggressive those crossbows were and how confident he was to split them. There he goes underneath the siege. And here, he kind of splits into the shot, unfortunately. The trees got in the way, but still, Alfred the Alpaca has 17 crossbows. That will grow two minutes away from the Imperial Age right now. 
indeed. We got more stables on the way for Janjishka, but Bengalis, they're not a Hussar sieve, right? You max out at like have. Yeah, Hussar isn't like the biggest upgrade in the world, but it's still not a unit that's going to scale all that well into the Imperial Age. And Imperial Age in itself is a very long way off for our blue player. He doesn't have the stone for a castle. And once we see Arb, Bracer, Chemistry come in, then it's going to be a huge opportunity for Alfred the Alpaca to push out across the map. Yeah, also, there is a lot of siege on the field right now for Janjushka. There is definitely a possibility if he lands a shot... And this could be phenomenal for him. Um, we, we're still... I noticed that Alfred the Alpaca isn't mining uh, much stone right now. I think he must have bought some of it. I'm not exactly sure how he got to 600 and, without buying it. Because he didn't mine his original stone. The light cap could be annoying in a lot of different areas. The siege micro from both of these two. Very reminiscent of the previous game. Just incredible. But 30 seconds away from Inborn Lou. I actually think Al Alfred the Alpaca has a really nice chance to take map control here. Oh my goodness, look at that QT90. I didn't know you were allowed to make this unit in a 1v1. We have battle elephants on the way for Jan Zeska. Now that is not something you get to see every day. While we also have some infantry upgrades coming in for Alpha the Alpaca, this could easily be for condos right away, but you can at the very least make some pikemen later on. This is crazy, all in castle age with a sieve that doesn't get knights? Battle elephants with light cav? I mean, he's expecting there's going to be a big, big push here from his opponent to, you know, make sense. We also don't see any imp upgrades coming in yet for these crossbows, I should point out. The condos are going to be there for the siege, though, Ornlu. And I feel like the condos should be able to kill the siege. It's just he needs something more than condos to really break Jan Jishka. Oh my god, Jishka <laughs> dropping production buildings everywhere. What? We got scurves and elephant archers queued up? What are you doing, Yanni Z? <laughs> I mean... Nice Mangonel attack round right there. Man uh, but the Mangonels still need to fall back. Condos, they're fast. They have melee damage. Oh my god. 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 This is so bad. Get away, crossbows. Oh, if this were you or I, we would have lost our crossbows three times over. Up for the Alpaca now sends in. He actually ejects the crossbows from the TC. He's got the condos running in to kill this big blob of blue. Still no bracer, still no chemistry on these crossbows. These are just Castle Age crossbows, but the micro from Alfred the Alpaca is fantastic. He will take out some of the siege, and it, it's still two minutes until Jan is up to the next stage. I, I think Alfred the Alpaca should be able to push this, just still waiting for more upgrades on the archers. Yeah, my concern now for Alfred the Alpaca is that he is falling further and further behind economically. Jan Jishka's macro, great, just like in game number one. And the army numbers are even, and if Jan Jishka is able to sort of bridge that gap to the Imperial Age, uh, he's probably going to just get to a stronger 200 population army than his opponent. Oh man, that's a lot of elephants. That's a lot of siege. But when you see Elephant Archer... Is not the unit you're going to be excited to be greeted by because of how tanky they are. Like we said, Bengali Elephant Archers are the best Elephant Archers in the game. And, oh man, could see a big attack round here for Jan Jishka. He sees the condos coming in. He does try. I like this. Alfred the Alpaca says, okay, I'm no longer going to use my condos against you here. I'm just going to go to your eco. That's the way to do it. Yeah, if there's one thing Bengalis don't have in the late game, it is mobility. I love the condos. Going in for the Siege Snipe does not manage to snag that last Manganel hit. But, I mean, Jan Jishka's at 158 bills. You might say that's over-booming, but if you're going for Elephants, that's totally fine. You can also get the Mahayana tech to reduce the population of your villagers as the Bengalis. Interesting, though, because the Treb push is now starting, and we are slowly getting to those unit upgrades that you need to see as Alfred. Yeah, I mean, you know, Skirms... Makes sense, right? A lot of the units Jan Jishka is making make sense against the archers, but the condos are finding some damage here, finding some good kills. Alfred is is starting to get his eco count up as well, as well as catch up on some upgrades. Chemistry wasn't in before. Ballistics wasn't in before. They're all coming in. Crossbows here are not going to have a lot of success. He's going to need more condos, but he's up to 53 on food, and Jan Jishka fell down to 25 on food because of those raids. So I'm not convinced just yet that even despite the Vil count, I don't think Jan Jishka is going to be able to get fully upgraded Elephant Archers for quite some time here, which makes me believe in Alfred the Alpaca, but oh my god, it's the Trail of Tears, he just lost everything, and now he's got, uh, uh, what, Militia in queue? I guess 
That's a misclick. Uh, but he's got yeah, militia. Yeah, sounds like a slight misclick right there. That said, the Genbo production has begun, and that's going to be your best unit the late game versus the Bengalis. It's the thing that you have the best deals with elephants due to you not having halberdier as the Italians. Oh god, Hondos that are castle. Try and looping around those units, but already this is getting real messy as that forward castle is not going to be stopped thanks to some nice quick walls. And the downside, though, is, you know, it's going to be getting trapped right away. If there's anything that Yandrishka has not done much in this game, it's Mind Stone. I, I mean, the castle is not really protected by anything here. That's that's a bit of a problem. And now more condos are running into the eco, and Yandrishka is going to be falling apart. His only castle is going to be the forward castle. It will go down. And then the condo raids are going to be massacring his eco. Ornlu, I think Alfred the Alpaca is in a perfect position to take this game now. And you just love the resilience of Alfred the Alpaca, right? I mean, Jan Zizka is clearly a top player. I, I don't think there is any grass doubt about it. But at the same time, Alfred the Alpaca is not afraid. You lose water, don't panic, just add TCs behind it, get those raids in and make the proper unit transitions. And suddenly things are looking a lot better for him. Yeah, and also you're now, you feel invested into repairing this castle to hold the position. Because if you don't hold the position, you'll have big problems. And that is stone you're now investing into repairs, which means you won't have the defensive castles and the condo raids. Could be a problem continuously. I love the upgrades here from Alfred the Alpaca. I love how he's continuing to defend and attack. Uh, but he does need to make sure he does take out that castle. Because if the castle stays up, it's a really nice position for Jan Jishka to hold. Yeah, if there's one thing I would have preferred maybe a little bit more from Alfred the Alpaca, it's just getting those trebs there sooner, because as you're saying, it, it's not something that you can just let your opponent hold on to for all that much longer. But still, yeah. I love the idea of just keep your opponent's base as much of a mess as possible, because if they're sitting there with like 35 to 40 elite elephant archers, there is no way you're ever killing that as Alfred the Alpaca. So just don't let that situation ever come to pass. Man, dude, like... The one thing that's becoming very apparent here is how slow elephants are. These elephants are very strong if you are fighting where the elephants want to engage. But as a castle, I think, went down there for Alfred the Alpaca immediately to a treb. He's going to build another no, one. I, th but... I think he canceled it. Okay, maybe he did. Maybe he did because he had a lot of stone. But yeah. it's just so hard to catch up with these condo raids. There's just condos everywhere right now. And the condos are now going to dive in front of the castle to try and take a trebuchet. And as the condos kill villagers, the trebs should most likely be protected. But no, the castle falls. And these trebs are going to be sniped. Okay, so chat's saying they lost the stone. My bad. But, I mean, regardless of that fail move, this is a huge cleanup there for Alfred the Alpaca. And I just love his usage of mobility. This is also yep. a map that has a lot of gold. And if you're playing something like Arabia, you might not have the gold to sustain this number of condos for this long. But Alfred the Alpaca what? able to make it work, population dropping for Jan Jishka, and I'm happy that I wouldn't get two sweeps for my two casts with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the sweep we did have was such an incredible level. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and we had the game go down to there was, uh, you know, only a, like seven trees remaining, but... Yeah. It does feel like, uh, with that statement, I agree with you, that Alfred the Alpaca has been able to hold on, and Jan Zizka felt like he wanted to go for the kill maybe a little too early, maybe underestimating his opponent here. And as Elite Genoese Crossbow comes in, I'm now linking Elite Genoese Crossbow, Condos, maybe Hussars. How are the Bengalis on the back foot supposed to be able to stop all this? It's going to be tough, and it's all about that utilization of mobility. On the one hand, Bengalis are pretty good at defending in the mid-game because there just aren't that many areas you can attack, especially if the rush distance is long. But as we get into these later stages of the game, there is just so much surface area of your base mm -hmm. that you need to defend. And, well, as we keep seeing time and time again, the Elephants just aren't the best equipped unit in the world to try and stop that. The Genbos are going to start to take fairly efficient fights. And this is looking really bad for Jan Zizka. And that, guys, is a tied series. And holy cow, that like both these games have been ridiculously high level. Yes, yeah, seriously. So good, right? Game one, Jan Zizka used the greed and eventually finished off his opponent. Here, he went for the greed and wasn't able to find the unit comp. And you got to think with these elephant archers. We still didn't see elite. We still didn't see the, the unique tech. Um, we, we, I think we were still some blacksmith upgrades missing. He never got to to be maxed out. And what I'm impressed with it with Alpaca 
he was behind by like 30 or so villagers and he caught up economically. He collected more food, more gold, more stone. That is not common. Only the best players, when they're behind like that, receiving that level of pressure, are able to find the counter raids, find the damage, while simultaneously fixing their economic problems and expanding at home. So here we are. And this is an interesting Civ matchup. This is one of the few times we've actually seen Cross in the main event. So that's the first thing. But also, the Huns are actually undefeated. I'm going to get ahead of the game here with Stats Guy, but Alfred the Alpaca picking an undefeated civilization, the Huns, on cross with the qualifiers and main event. And the Malay had one of the best win rates in our qualifier. I think this might be the first time we see them in any game because they were banned so frequently. So both civs very strong, and cross is a map that's all about multitasking here. Absolutely. And in that last game, we do have to give the slight multitasking edge to Alfred the Alpaca. So although this is Jan Jishka's home map, I think, right? Um, it will be, I think, a bit of an opportunity here for Alfred the Alpaca. Almost certainly going to be very comfortable in this game regardless. Yeah. So Huns not having to build houses is really helpful when you need to produce a lot of units. And on this map, there's four pawns. And so you could, in theory, be producing at all those pawns while also producing out of your town centers, while also producing out of whatever military building you make. Um, so that is why I think the Huns are strong. Now, you don't really feel the wood savings of not needing to build houses until, I'd say, late feudal and uh, in, in Castle Age and beyond. The Malay, they don't have any savings bonuses except for, I guess, their fish traps. But the Malay have tons of vision on their docks, which we'll see eventually. Uh, and fish, it actually means that fish trapping is so much stronger if you're able to fully secure a pond. And some players come to mind when we think fish trapping. So if we see a player with like two docks in the same pond adding fish traps, that definitely narrows down some guesses for some people. Yeah, that, that gives you Viper Ganji Barrels vibes right there. The, uh, the BF players for sure. Yeah, yeah, Malay win rate is very, very high. They are just so good in so many situations. But... This is another instance of a Civ that's very mobile with Huns, lots of Cav, Cav Archer play, versus Malay, who like to take those straight-up fights powered by a huge economy. So it's kind of a similar dynamic to the last game, even if Malay aren't... And they, they, Malay don't play like Bengalis and Huns don't play like Italians, but the dynamics between these two Civs are quite similar. Yeah, we got Alfred the Alpaca going forward to scout very early, and I think he might have found the Dock Villager on the shoreline too. There's definitely a red dot there and the quick wall happened from Jan Jishka. So Alfred the Alpaca stealing some sheep. Nice quick wall from Jan Jishka. And Jishka's gonna bat that away, but you know, a lot of players lose that villager there. That's why Alfred the Alpaca went forward. Nice job from Jishka to get some nice quick walls, to be attentive there. But um, you know, I, I wanna talk about which players have loved the Huns as we see a gate. Oh, nice quick walling. And um, Mihai? And Vinchester in the qualifier played Huns almost exclusively on this map. So as you think about players, you're oftentimes looking at preference. And I think Huns are, in many pros' eyes, below a Civ like Japanese, maybe below Persians, maybe below Malians. I know we've had bans here, but it's interesting to see the Huns as a pick when the stakes are so high now in the main event. Yeah, I definitely think Vinchester comes to mind in terms of the overall play style plus the the Civ pick here, but I, I still think that Ooh. it's not super clear one way or the other. And is that a villager already going over to the west? Um, it might be. I, I've got a point I need to bring up. Uh, there was a game from Jean Bureau on day one where he was Hans. That would be a pig, actually. Uh, he was Hans. <laughs> and in order to stop his opponent from docking his pond, he dropped palisade walls along the shoreline to prevent a dock spot. Now, Mihai did that. He was the only one who did that in the qualifier. But um, another player who had, who had done it who's not in the main event was Dark, who was his teammate. Dark is good, is, is pretty close with Vinchester, who is in the main event. There's also Sebastian, who is Mihai's teammate, who's in the main event. And my bold prediction, and chat, you better applaud me if I get it, but... My bold prediction is that we would actually see one more player in Hidden Cup do the Palisade trick on the shoreline. I actually think it's I think it's smart. I think it's good. I think more people should do it. And if this is a Hun player like Vinchester or Mihai, maybe we'll start to see some dots going up on the shoreline at some point. 
I know I'd love to see that. And indeed, that was one of the things that really tipped uh, Jean Bureau being Mihai, at least in my eyes. But yeah. something I got to give Jan Jishka credit for is these walls. This is like me playing, man. Just, <laughs> just make yourself as safe as possible. I don't want any forward talks, man. <laughs> well, and, and you know, this is um, this is something that you would do if you are OK with staying on one pond, which would mean that maybe we see some fish trapping involved here for Jan Jishka. The more typical approach is to go out and take all the ponds. But that obviously comes with some level of risk. So we'll we'll see, I suppose. Is that villager going to build an outpost? Okay, well, this is the more typical approach to get vision. Uh, and I, I, my idea, my excellent call out, which would have been so epic and everyone would have said, way to go, T90. It's just ruins now. You think Twitch chat's going to give you credit for something? It's a bold I move. mean, they are, they are making alpaca noises at the moment. So you never really know yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah at any given time exactly but, uh... <laughs> but something that we could keep in mind is if you remember way back in the day lan used to play this style on cross a lot where you just stick with your one pond and go for a huge fish broom there and then push mm -hmm. out with some sort of imperial age timing or late cast yeah. into early imperial age that is something that malay could possibly do very well that said yeah let's just go to the other side of the map and uh try and sneak up a dock and it looks like that will be successful well, you know, Alfred does know about this, which I think is key. And Alfred, even though he's not walled, Alfred is still fishing away right now. So it seems like it's going to be a passive cross game. There goes the Vill. That Vill could easily get a dock down and then disrupt whatever fishing eco Yanjishka is hoping to go for. Uh, Yanjishka is adding a fire immediately out of that dock, which is a smart move. But the fire cannot fully deny a dock, so it might just lead to a bit of a naval battle there. That does seem to be the most likely course of action, but you can see that Alfred is going to be taking that more aquatic approach. Yes, he's adding in the archery range now, but still focused mostly with going up to three pawns. Whereas on the other <laughs> side, Jan Zizka, I think is just going to be content to just sit in his base on the one hand and wall and then do most of his uh, military fighting here on this eastern pond. Yeah, I think it's also important to show the vision from the dock for Jan Zizka. This is exclusive to Malay. His dock vision might actually give him vision over the other dock. I think it was just out of sight. The fire galley sees it now, but you get a lot of vision with the Malay, and Jan is going to immediately drop the second dock because he doesn't want to give up that pond as he sneaks with the villager over to the left pond. I really like how this has been played. Look, Alfred just checked with a fishing ship to see if the enemy's docked there and figured, okay, he didn't dock there at all. And now he's going to outpost which is such a good play, but it's very likely Jan Jishka could get a dock down before the outpost gets vision on this here. Yeah. Uh, well, the villager trying to run into the water. Is she going to be greedy enough and try to build a dock on the box turtles? No, she's just going to build a dock right there. At the very least, the outpost well, will obviously see this. Uh, no vill fighting just yet, so it looks like we are just going to be fighting for docks on various pods. Notably that when all of this is going on right now, it is currently 10 fishing ships to 10 fishing ships, but that vill going down could deny the dock. Yeah, and that villager is very weak, and the villager will go down. Nice snipe there from Jan Jishka, who's just playing so greedy and already had two fire galleys out. So should be able, with two docks in this pond, to win on this pond. Here comes some archer pressure, though, from Alfred. And Alfred, I believe, has noticed that this is happening and is bringing the vill Archers, I like this a lot. Like, you already are spending so much wood on fishing ships or, you know, wood and gold on the, sh the ships themselves, the Navy. So mixing in a couple archers, especially when you're not going to get population capped easily as the Huns, you're saving a lot of wood now, is very nice. And okay, Jan Jishka, how's your quick walls here? How are you going to get yourself out of this one? This is going to be tricky, and uh, you didn't notice the Witcher goes down. Clearly watching some more Lou Rex for those quick walls. Um... Yeah, that just, uh, it's going to make fighting for that western pond much more difficult. You might need to commit another villager, but I love the spearman here um, trying to just protect against the starting scout because you know your opponent doesn't have anything else. Mm -hmm. Yep. Also really like, like a lot of players are just going to give up the pond when they uh, lose that vill on the eastern side. So the fact that Alfred sent another vill over there was really smart to me and we'll get the kill there. So both will be in Castle Age in about two minutes. I know that the Malay player hasn't clicked up yet, but this is the Malay we're talking about. And they zoom up to the next stage. 
And then With from the there... Too? Yeah, yeah, you didn't know that? Oh, I, I must have not been paying attention. Yeah, man, just go, zoom. just go, click up the castle age. It, it just zoom, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> I, I think Alfred the Opaca is in the better position right now. I think, yes, he's open, but like being open against a player who's not going to counter attack you is not going to be a problem. And I think the res, the resources are really going to start to stack up potentially for him. Absolutely. I mean, you're already eight bills ahead. You're going to be hitting castle age at around the same time. Just the power of that Malay bonus, got a demo ship incoming. Oof. And it's going to be, what's going to be good here for Jan Jishka is he's going to be able to better sustain ship production on multiple pawns due to having a stronger economy. Alfred's yep. probably going to try to do something a bit more on the land. And, but if Jan Jishka is fully walled, which it looks like he's really looking to reinforce those walls, I think this should be good for our blue player. Yeah. Well, he took a really good fight on the east there. Killed a couple ships. Alfred was distracted. I wonder if Alfred's going to be considering making this a bit more about land and maybe going for a siege workshop. Uh, I feel like that would be a very realistic approach, especially with the hill he has towards the middle. Uh, he will hop out with a demo eventually, but it wouldn't surprise me if we have a Vil dropping something at some point here next to these archers. It just feels natural. And yes, there is going to be a siege workshop from Alfred. I love this play from Alfred the Alpaca. Absolutely. You see how intensely your opponent is trying to fight for water. It means that they can't be spending your resources everywhere at once, right? So try and exploit where you know your opponent isn't investing as much. And we do have the defensive siege workshop for Jan Jishka. And something that is going to be tough for Alfred the Alpaca to overcome is just that it's actually better for Jan Jishka to spread himself out more than it is for Alfred because Jan Jishka has the better eco. We might have a big demo on this right-hand side as well. Lots unraveling here for Jan Jishka. Uh, there's going to be a demo in that dock there. And normally what you do is you hop out with one fire and then you, you hope all the fires cr crowd around that and then you land the demo. We'll see. It, it's going to come eventually here anyways because the dock's going to go down. He's repairing away. He's not producing anything. He's focusing here. There's a million things happening, which is why a lot of players ban this map. And there we go. The fires hop out and boom, the demo connects. And good luck with that pond, Jan Jishka. Man, you just really have to appreciate how good these guys are with their unit control, how everything is so precise and so deliberate. I mean, they're both clearly yep. fast players. And right now, it is just all about that multitasking. And once again, although the eco is a bit better for Jan Jishka, that multitasking from Alfred the Alpaca is really impressive. Yeah, and, and simultaneously, we, we couldn't show both things at once. Jan Jishka did the same thing with the demo on the other side, I'm pretty sure. So now he's going to have the West, and... This is where I'm wondering, how much is Jan Jishka going to fish trap? He's got this crazy defense set up. The Malay would want to have those fish traps going down. You get more food on your fish traps, and they also uh, are cheaper. I think at a discount at like 33%. So is Jan Jishka uh, fish trapping right now? Two -thirds, he actually. is fish trapping like a Black Forest pro in there. Or <laughs> Do you know how long it takes for a Malay fish trap to run out game time? Uh, I bet you you do. Well, I wouldn't ask if I didn't know. Uh, it's actually over two hours game time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, good to know. <laughs> like, you're basically it. set up for, for the rest of this game. <laughs> yeah, I, I also remember people complaining when it was nerfed. It, oh, it's only two hours now. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, I this mean... is just such a ridiculously efficient setup for Jan Jishka. And again, it could lean him into a really nice timing in early Imperial Age. He's just been so greedy. So incredibly greedy. And, and Alfred has brought like, a lot of pressure, but always feels like Jan Jishka has just enough. I do think map control is is an important aspect, like a very important aspect of the game that cannot be overlooked. And Jan Jishka has given that up for now. But I guess the plan for Jan Jishka is maybe to get a castle down, maybe go for some karambits. But Jan Jishka has to be careful. This is a lot of pressure. Villagers are going down. The TC could go down. This is now the downside, I guess, of the greedy approach of Jan Jishka, is he just doesn't have any resistance, anything to really compete with this pressure right now. It is going to be pretty tough. The stable, I think, is really odd. Maybe you just try to get some scouts to type the monks. That's a great Manganel hit, getting the one for zero. And he's going to be working towards a castle as well. He's ahead by 11 villagers. And this is going to be just a super safe setup here for Jan Jishka. Yeah, I think I wouldn't mind an elephant. Normally, you're not going to see that because players are worried there's going to be monks. 
But an elephant hopping out of that stable? It could maybe clear up the siege. We'll see. Um, Ornlu, I assume you can still hear me, correct? Yeah, why, why wouldn't I? Okay. Uh, because <laughs> my power flicked on and off three times, and I was I was very scared. Oh. <laughs> I've, got a back, I've got a backup battery here, you know, so I was just making sure I was oh, really no. concerned for a second. <laughs> nope. Sound good to me, man. <laughs> All right. Good, good I'm still here. I don't want to miss this because this is ramping up. This hill for Alfred the Alpaca is super important. So difficult for Jan Jishka to, to fight uphill with the Mega L shots right now. Yeah, it, it's a tough one to defend that TC. And the one thing that is tough when you're going for this defensive setup on this map is you don't usually have back wood lines to work with. So you necessarily yeah. have to be building your TCs in a position like Jan Jishka did right there, which opens up this potential to get damaged on a mid game. But there is the castle on the way. And Ooh, that right be, now, that could be there's destroyed. still a big Ville lead for uh, Jan Jishka. I, I, Alfred didn't go for it, but I think he could have actually destroyed it with the initial volley. Can he range any of the villagers here? Oh! Oh, oh no! He Oof. wanted to deny it! And he loses two mangonels! Jan Jishka says, get out of here, fool! What a great shot, but the castle's still not up. There's still crossbow. There's still more siege here. This is still not the best of positions right now for Jan Jishka. Not at all. I don't know if the mangonels can actually even range that unless they're in that little nook, which just opens them up to getting wrecked by a, a mangonel shot from Jan Jishka, which is exactly what happened previously. So the castle, it is going to go up. There has been some idle Jeez, that is some great mangonel control from Jan Jishka. We got to see. We, we need consistent pond updates here for Jan Jishka because while he's doing all this, he's still churning out fishing ships. And he is still fish trapping, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there's no fish fishing ships there. What? What is he? Is he Huns? No, he's Malay. And he's just stacking up these fishing ships all along the dock. This is the 2024 meta if you have a pond. And, you know, I'm thinking, like, the, the list of players who would play like Leon Jiska's playing is very short. Because look at that. That's me. That's a lot uh. of players in this event. That's a normal player who doesn't practice the, the fish trappage. I don't even laugh at it, guys. Why are we laughing at it? It's actually kind of okay, but the the fish trap stack from Jan Jishka is the best way to possibly do it. And he knows that. That's why he just walled up from the start, Orlo. Absolutely. That is the goal when you're going for this approach. So I would be very disappointed if Jan Jishka went for the full wall defensive style and didn't have perfect fish traps because that's sort of the, your big payoff is getting yep. the really great food eco. We've also got a couple of good old Malay knights going for the counterattack here. Going to force up a defensive monastery really quick. But still, this is not something you have the easiest time defending as Alfred the Alpaca. Although those are some Ooh. really beautiful quick walls. <laughs> wow. Could actually trap the knights in if he was really comfortable doing so. But it's the first time we've seen a monastery quick wall. Very well played from Alfred. Doesn't lose a single vill to those knights. Is thinking about the Imperial Age soon. But now you've got to be worried with your siege because uh, Karambit warriors could come out in the field and oh my goodness, here come the Karambits. Here come some villagers. I think Jan Jishka wants a forward castle here. And I don't know if the army is really gonna be there to deny it. I think that is a lumber <laughs> camp place to block a castle foundation. We have crossbows on the way. We might have a doubt sighting here, Orlu. Uh, I mean, at the very least, it actually was successful in preventing the castle from going up on, on the hill. So. Even if the castle goes up here, it's already an impressive start there for Alfred the Alpaca, but right now he is on the high ground with those archers and with the cav archers. The mangonel control here is essential, just a glancing hit on both sides. Oh, oh man, but those are just way too many mangonels, I think, for Jan This is insane. Oh, the knight's also killing villagers there, and the castle might actually go up. The lumber camp foundation has been taken out. He could maybe move the castle foundation closer to the TC. He did lose a lot of villagers. We'll have imp for both, but Jan Jishka ends up getting the better of the engagement. All the siege is here now. I, I think Alfred the Alpaca's TC will probably go down here shortly. And yeah, what a late series. Castle Age move out. I, I don't really think this is going to be a very recoverable position here for Alfred the Alpaca. Yeah, you've got a bunch of Cav Archers on the way. You're on your way up to the Imperial Age, but the map control is just so solidly in favor of Jan Jishka. He's going to get plus four defense the second he hits Imperial Age as Malay. And those Ooh, Karambits yep. are going to take actually a good long while to go down. Yeah, and and the, the timing that Malay can get is just ridiculous, right? 
And now you've got 37 fishing ships. So there's seven over there, but there's 30 fishing ships elsewhere. A couple on that side. That food eco is untouched. Like you said, it, the, the fish straps for the Malay are going to bring in food continuously. It is unraidable right now. And we, we don't have a single farm for Yanjishka here. It is pure fish trap boom. The Malay dream. And another castle forward for Yanjishka. This guy just won't stop dropping castles. Hey, man, if it ain't broke, don't uh, stop doing it. And right there, it is just going to be so difficult to take down that many mangonels. There are four of them. Yeah, you got Bracer on the way immediately. I'm sure you'll probably grab chemistry as soon as you can after ballistics is done. It's still going to be tough to get the numbers of cav archers you need to stop the amount of Karambit spam that's going to be coming from two castles. Yeah, Karambit's produced so quickly, and the Malay get the armor upgrades instantly and for free. So it's just everything about the Malay is so timing-oriented. This is why the Malay were banned a lot, because players have really figured out how to use those timings. The somewhat recent change of the instant and free armor has obviously helped those timings. I do think Heavy Cav Archer is actually really good against the Malay long term. Um, so if Alfred the Opaca could somehow keep his eco alive and research that, it could be strong. But how are you supposed to stop random Karambits from wrecking your eco right now? Like, you have your Cav Archers there, and now the Karambits are always going to find an area for damage. Yeah, they're just so sh cheap and they can run around everywhere. And then it's going to, what most likely is the case, buy you time for that elite skirmisher switch. As you can see that upgrade coming in right now, Cav Archers themselves are very good at raiding, but they can't really sit under TC fire. Got a defensive castle incoming. And right now, the biggest concern I have for Alfred the Alpaca is he's only on 76 villagers. He's actually lost a ton this game. Yeah, he saw Satan. He's hit 30 Cav Archers, but they have to be split up. Here he's trying to get some counter damage in, but if that's your if that's your strat to try and raid wood lines, when your opponent's making karambits, it's not going to be it. Like he, the guy doesn't need wood anymore. He already has invested into the fish traps enough to produce karambits long term. I think Jan Jishka will know this. He was ahead in the previous game, could have won that one, ended up going for a crazy forward castle there. So that's a trend. But here his forward castles have given him such great map control. <laughs> Big uh, shot there hit here, but, I mean, good control. Got a ton of vills on stone for both players. But the eco, we have four vills on wood for Alfred the Alpaca. That's not good for making calf archers. But at least he doesn't have to build houses, people. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. At least he doesn't have to build houses. Let's go. Huns are OP. Woo! <laughs> Clearly, uh, but we have more skirmisher upgrades incoming here for Janjushka. He's ahead by, what, around 5,000 resources. At the very least, Janjushka is doing a good job of trying to keep the numbers of working villagers low for Janjushka with those raids, but he's not able to replenish a bunch on his side. He's only on one TC right now, and that means yeah. every build that he uses is so much more difficult to replace. Yeah, I think Janjushka basically is thinking, as long as my castle stand i could take a moment to tech switch into skirms and then this is uncounterable i think a lot of people including myself i would have yoloed in with the karambits to take out these cav archers and he didn't even do that and he dropped some gates here to trap alfred the alpaca's cav archers in they're not going to get away and that is not what alfred alpaca alfred the alpaca excuse me needed right now not at all. The one thing is that the Skirms still don't have that many upgrades, plus two defense just now incoming. So it's really going to come down to the Ooh. unit control. They still don't have ballistics. Jeez. Oh, man. We're seeing a lot of traps here. A lot of units getting trapped, and the GG's called instantly. Jan Jishka goes up 2-1. And uh, I'll say the same thing we said at the conclusion of game number one and game number two. What a phenomenal series. The level from these two is so high right now. Absolutely. Jan Jishka, just a macro monster. So many more resources collected. And those Malay timings are just ridiculously tough to stop. And you can see why they're banned so often. Their transitions are really good. Their tech tree is great. And it is just tough for a more generic Civ like Hunts to stop, even with good Cav Archers. Yeah, I think... When Alfred saw those walls coming down, he probably was like, oh no, not a safe fish boom for the Malay. This was an interesting moment. Like Alfred placing a lumber camp to try and block the castle because he can't build houses to do. So it was pretty epic. But Jan Jishka just bringing everything forward. And he always had more Karambits on the way. He always had more Manganels on the way. 
I think if had Jan Jish could not gone for the castle drop into the fast imp, I actually think Alfred the Alpaca could have had more time to stabilize here, Ornlu. So that was that was a really important and possibly an understated strategy there from Jan Jishka to go defense into crazy army and forward castles instead of defensive. Oh Ooh. man, it's it's Alfred. Hold on. Um this is evacuation, which is exciting, but both players going into the next game switch their color. Now we are gonna change their color to what we had before for consistency. But finally, after all this data, all this talk we've had. We have players switching colors, and I did say with the data, Alfred the Alpaca, or sorry, Leary. <clears throat> Leary is consistently changing his color and very frequently does end up picking green. And then Viper and Mihai, known for picking yellow. So, you know, for some of the people saying Viper versus Leary, maybe an indicator there. We are going to have to keep colors uh, red and blue, though, for consistency's sake here uh or loop but what, what do you think about the matchup in the map there's a lot to break down here oh there is we've seen so much variety on evacuation already in the tournament berbers i don't think we've seen at all on any map so i think this is going to be our first berber sighting they are going to be strong with the, the cavalry and the mobility but they're not really the early feudal age civ and we've seen a lot of heavy feudal age pressure yeah true i actually i love berbers here because you have to walk quite a distance to get to the other areas of resources past the crossing. Yeah, you see that? So you're, you're what, 5% faster in Dark Age? It gets even faster later. This helps you justify this lumber camp, which a lot of other players won't do. Um, if you're going to go water, the ships are faster as well, which will mean you can arrive to the opponent's fishing ships a bit faster. And then I've seen a whole lot of like random knights around in Castle Age trying to get raids in. Berbers are very good there too. And then if it goes late game, like Camel Archer is a pretty insane unit to have. So I, I may be even a little surprised we haven't seen Berbers more frequently so far. I think it's a good pick. I don't know, T90. This map doesn't really go late ever. I don't think uh, <laughs> efficiency is going to matter at that point. <laughs> yeah. We have uh, just, just uh, to let people know. Uh, this is a, there's 170,000 wood on this map, and we cast the game on day two, I think it was, where there was only 700 wood remaining. It was, let's just say, I hope the longest game of Hidden Cup 5, but maybe it won't be. <laughs> we will have to see. Uh, and Berbers, though, in general, in the Imperial Age, just really efficient with those Camel Archers and Cheap Hussars on top of it. So that could be an area where Japanese struggle a little bit. On the other hand, looks like it will be for an early dock play. And what I really liked about this map is that players aren't necessarily going for the dock instantly, but that is what we're seeing from both players in this game, go going on the side dock. Mm -hmm. So there was a player day one. It was Vasco de Gama. And what he did was he went galleys on water, and archers on land, which is really micro-intensive. And when I think of Alfred the Alpaca, I think of micro-intensive. This guy really likes to micro a lot. And I'm thinking, making fire galleys against the Japanese fishing ships, it doesn't bode too well to kill them. But if you go for galleys, you have more damage output. So I, I could see galleys with Berbers, again, they're faster, being a good option here. But then I guess, how are you supposed to micro that with whatever else the plan is? Yeah, that's going to be tough. A lot of multitasking required, but that's what Alfred the Alpaca has been doing well. Where Yanjishka has been succeeding, it's been about that defensive macro-oriented play. We saw it yeah, in game number yeah. one, we saw it in game number three. So I, if Alfred's going to see some success here, I think he's going to really want to make things scrappy. Agreed. Yep, I, I agree with that statement. Now, obviously, those villagers have to walk quite a distance, but the efficiency will be there on the wood line. Whereas for Jan Jishka, uh, thankfully he's Japanese, so he has a lot of savings in this regard, but he'll be chopping through those wood lines pretty quickly, having most of his villagers here for now. Uh, if there was ever a sieve that could dominate early feudal age here, though, it would be the Japanese because of their flexibility. It's so easy for them to justify the man at arms. And um, I mean, scouting is of the utmost importance for both players right now. Jan Jishka needs to find if those villagers are out there, which he hasn't confirmed. And then Alfred the Alpaca. He needs to see if there's a barracks, which he has just now confirmed. So loses HP on the scout, 
But scouting wise, at least Alfred the Alpaca knows what's up. Yeah, there's only one militia so far. Okay, there's another one queued up. Feudal Age times are similar, but there is the extra fishing ship out faster for Yanjishka. Already around 100 resources collected ahead. Japanese just one of the best early Feudal Age civs in general, but especially on a hybrid map like Evacuation. That said, the early rush distance is quite long unless you're going forward, so there is probably time for Alfred to get some sort of defense cobbled together. Yeah, I think pre-walling this area is really important. It doesn't take big investment, and it can take your mind away from having to deal with that if Man at Arms come. Because if I'm Yanjishka right now, that's where my militia are headed. There they go. It's going to be second dock for Alfred. I'm definitely feeling a galley opening based on the start. Could be wrong, of course. But again, that wood line is exposed, and Yanjishka knows about it. And here we go. Both players in Feudal Age now is a galley opening for Alfred. And Alfred is uh, going to wall this up here. He will overchop that tree, though, if he's not careful. Yeah, you really have to pay attention to how much wood is left there, especially because this is the exact Ooh. type of... The exact point in the game when the overchopping is going to matter the most, like early feudal age. But, I mean, we shouldn't doubt Alfred the Alpaca. He's just been so attentive to these little details. And he's now picking up double bed axe. A little bit slower than his opponent, but not likely to make a big difference. And it's actually going to be for the Fire Galleys, T90. Do you like this? Um, It's just easier to play if you go for fires. Like, if you go for galleys, you look away for a second and you lose everything. I don't hate it, like... It actually gives you a better chance of defending your own fish, too. I think where this gets really complicated right now is, can you defend from the archer follow-up? Like, Jan Jiska's going... He's going double dock in a moment, but he chose to prioritize his wood spend on archers. So, like, as a villager got sniped there, Jan Jiska found Jeez. a weak villager on a straggler tree and doinked oh, it. Um, but yeah, I mean, archers are going to be on the way here, Ornlu. So you might need to tower somewhere. And we've seen players tower their gold. Or we've also seen players tower their wood on the outside. Yeah, and it's going to be a tough decision either way. However, if you're Alfred the Alpaca, I wouldn't hate him going for more tower-based defense on the land. Just so you can more safely get to Castle Age. Focus your resources on the water because you don't want to let Japanese go for a free fish boom. And then once you yeah. hit Castle Age, you've already been mining plenty of stone to start getting in towards camel archers. Yeah, fair. I, I like this play from Janjishka. It is very reminiscent of what I we saw from Vasco da Gama game one, where the the range units do not go to the gold. They actually go to where that wood line is. You go to the outside, and this is gonna be a feast for for Jan Jishka. Jan Jishka gets to see all these bills, and Alfred the Alpaca has completely misjudged this. Oh no, I mean, he's Berbers, so he can run away a bit faster, but that is not what he needed right now. No, that's going to be three total dead villagers in just a moment. Not a great start for him, just not prepared for all of the units he's going to find on the land. But the crazy thing here for Jan Jishka is that he's not even going to fall behind on the water either. I mean, he's got. Only one fire galley out right now, but you can just easily sail around with those uh, fishing ships so they don't die to the uh, enemy fire galleys. And he's going to have plenty of his own ships queued up there. This is just looking so good right now for oh, Blue. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Alfred. Man. Alfred. Alfred, there's a hole. Alfred. Alfred, there's a hole. Alfred loses more villagers. Alfred is falling apart here. This is the dream scenario on land for Jan Zizka. We get some nice raids in with the archers. The villagers are fighting back. And that's not what you want to be doing right now with your villagers. And that's going to be another dead vill at least. Might be one more. There's militia there too that could finish off the job. Quick walls needed. Militia's going to try and get through. And the militia... Why are you going back? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> okay, villager survives. It's all good. Uh, that is I tough, mean... but... Good control here for Alfred on the water. He still has a positive KD, uh, even yeah. with all of those villagers lost, but more idle TC time. He's down by four vills right now. And if there's anything that we've seen throughout this series so far, it's that Jan Jishka can get ahead in resources collected very quickly. And I don't think you want to be falling behind here as Alfred the Alpaca in that sort of situation. Let's not... We, we didn't see it because we were seeing the vills, but it's four fishing ships right now for Alfred. The potential to make more and did kill the Japanese fishing ships, which is very impressive. So that's what we missed. That's why the game's still somewhat close. 
And quite a few villagers now heading out there for Alfred to take some of that hunt, uh, which we're also seeing from Janjishka here. Very nice balance. I will say, though, that like Janjishka's timings with the land attack seems like a player who's played this and practiced this map a little bit more. But I, maybe it's the downside of like not having a flexible Civ like Japanese. Or I, I, maybe, of course, it's the upside of being Janjishka and having the Japanese, and he's just been able to afford this. I mean, yeah, there's a reason Japanese are picked so much on hybrid maps throughout, you know, basically every tournament in the past several years. You can just do basically everything all at once. Fire ships are now coming up in sufficient numbers. It's four to five. It's going to be enough to at least prevent your opponent from safely adding in their own fish boom. And on top of all of that, Janjushka just has a huge lead here on the land. There needs to be a defensive tower like yesterday to protect these yeah. girls. Very stubborn not to do that, right? You have skirms. I'm sure that what the thinking was is if with skirms I can defend, but Janjushka has added in some scouts now too. So the scouts could kill the skirmishers. Still no tower. I'm sure that villagers will get pulled to attack the scout if need be. But look at that stream of units no. continuing for Janjushka. And he's not giving up on water either. It feels like he could win on land and win on water simultaneously soon. Yeah, this is pretty crazy here. We've got Fletching coming in for both players. And Janjushka just has not been attacked at all at home. He's already ahead by around 500 resources collected, which at this stage in the game is huge. And I mean... You need to start looking to take good fights as Alfred the Alpaca, but I don't know how you do that when you're at 6 army to 17. Yeah, and the micro is so good for Janjushka as well. Like there, he focuses down the archer, which will allow his his scouts to do uh, more damage here. We'll end up losing some of his archers, but he'll clear up the skirms. He will force the tower. He may kill another villager before the tower even completes. Janjushka, a complete player right now. And as the tower goes up, that is a great sign right now for Janjushka. You're just thinking... All right, I killed another villager or two. He now can't tower his wood line because he built the tower here, and he can't drop town centers easily in the next age either because he doesn't have the stone for that. Well, he is mining stone with nine vills, so that is going to be oh, for geez. a lot of potential future towers at the very least. But Jan Zizka's gameplay is just so clean. The KD is even, but a net plus six in eco kills and that resources collected advantage. It's what we saw in game numbers, uh, actually all of the games so far. And it was more yep. of a comeback in game number two. And right now, Jan is going to have a big advantage in Castle Age. I do really like how Alfred... I know it's not ideal to like mine all the stone, and now he needs to sell it. But you got to get up to Castle Age. So I like the idea here to use the market. Being up to Castle Age first, getting Camel Archers out, uh, getting a Knight or two out, that can change things in this game. And we've seen at least the Knights do that before. So... I mean, the evacuation continues here. Villagers must hate their lives on this map. That's risky micro, but actually really nice micro to try and get the villa away. <laughs> okay. Uh, the not bad. Make it. So I, I think with a stable, a couple nights, and then maybe some TCs, maybe Alfred the Alpaca can settle this down a little bit more. Yeah, I, I think that what Alfred really wants at this point is just to stabilize. He's had his economy harassed basically the entirety of feudal age he just needs to sit back Ooh. and start getting geez, uh getting towards those camel arches because at the end of the day berbers will develop towards a stronger army composition than japanese yep. we're gonna see more scouts from yanjishka yanjishka will see this stone being mined heavily and he will think his opponent will want to drop a castle and go into camel archers what what do you do as japanese if you think your opponent's going to go camel archers what, what, what's your uh thinking there um, maybe just go for Monk, Skirm, Defense, add TCs, boom, and then try and hit him with an early Imperial Age timing. Yeah. The yeah. issue for Japanese, though, is that unless you're going for Cav Archers yourself, which honestly could be the case, and if Japanese Cav Archers beat Camel Archers, I'll be very sad. <laughs> but, oh, beautiful there at the Fire Ship. Yeah, I, I think that you probably aren't going to win the mobility style, but yeah, Yanjushka can go for it. Another villager is going to go down. Well played from Janjushka. I mean, there's been very little resistance, though. Like, clearly the plan is Camel Archer. And the plan is Camel Archer from the starting area, not where all the villagers actually are right now. The, it looks like Jishka is going to win water now. It will be Cav Archers for Janjushka immediately from those ranges. Villagers here need to be protected again. There's a lot of weak ones now. More eco getting picked off. The tower should protect the rest of them somewhat. But I love the lack of hesitation here from Zizka. He goes underneath the tower foundation, 
he's such a cutthroat player here, Orlu, and th he's made it look so easy. This is probably the most difficult map to play, and all the timings have worked out perfectly. Yeah, I mean, again, he's just keeps on sending units at his opponent, and there just isn't a whole lot that Alfred's been able to do to stop it. Now we have a second TC coming in. We've got more Cav Arturs on the way, adding in some Knights. Bodkin's coming in. And if we're going to see Alfred take this game, he's going to need to really lean into the efficiency of Camel Archers. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Now, the recent change, Japanese now have plus two attack with their Archers against other Archers, right? So Cav Archers against other would... Archers, yes. So, so that would, yeah, Cav Archers against other Archers, thank you. As another villager gets sniped there, it's insane. I would say this applies to Camel Archers, and I, I feel like in Castle Age, at least, it should mean that the Cav Archers actually do a pretty reasonable job here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it applies to anything that has the Archer armor class, except Skirmishers, which have the mm. their own unique armor class. So, yes, Cav Archers do have that Archer armor class, so they get bonus damage versus uh, Camel Archers. Yeah, and here come the Camel Archers now. So, being a unique unit, you can only produce them from the castle. That's kind of a funny look. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> The Cav Archers should be able to have the superior mass for now. That's a nice find from Alfred. Alfred has horrible food eco right now. And Jan Jishka should <laughs> be able eco? to have a better balance there. Yeah, I mean, I look, I mean, honestly, Jan Jishka's got two on food. So it's not great for either player, but it feels like it's more realistic that he could get the food. Um, yeah, there go the Camel Archers, though, Orlu. Yeah, and... Camel Archers are still going to be better in a straight-up fight than Cav Archers, but if the Cav Archers are better upgraded and in almost double the numbers, it feels like there is still a lot of opportunity for the CA to perform quite well, especially as Japanese here. That's going to be another dead villager, because why not? 18 total eco units killed this game, game by Janjishka. Yeah, Janjishka is incredible at finding damage. It's kind of awkward for him to do that right now. There's a tower. I honestly am still impressed on the other side of things with Alfred the Alpaca's ability to not take more damage. Like, this could have honestly been so much worse for him. Here's another example of it. He's got to uh, go for some quick walls. He might actually trap these units in here. Jan Zizka has gone too far, and the only way he escapes is through the tower, through the wood line, and through camel archers. That is a very pointy exit. And yeah, okay, Cav Archers trying to micro as best they can, run to the semi-safety of the fire galleys. But still, this was a really cute move from Alfred the Alpaca. Wow. And to our point, Berbers, Camel Archers, very strong. There's nine of them now. There's only five Cav Archers for Janjishka. The eco is superior for Janjishka, yes. But it's not crazy... Though it could be because Cav Archers are now here on the stone and Jan Jishka will never let Alfred rest. How frustrating it must be to be Alfred the Alpaca right now. Yeah, that's a painful one. We now have bloodlines coming in. But I mean, we're already staring at over 3,000 resources difference uh, collected. You're on two TCs to one. And I mean, at this point, how do you even get to the other side of the map as Alfred the Alpaca? Yep, yep. Yeah, exactly, because you... Well, the tricky thing for him is he doesn't know his opponent is already on Elite Skirmisher. That was a good switch from Jan Jishka, having Skirms out, and Ballistics is also on the way, so it feels like Skirms are going to match that, which then would mean Alfred would need Siege or maybe some Knights, and definitely feels like an all-in style here, like all-in double castle Camel Archer as the long term for Alfred. Just simply not going to be enough against Elite Skirmisher. Nah, I mean, at the very least, Camel Archers have seven base attacks, so they can punch through the Skirmisher Pierce armor better than basically any other Cav Archer at this point in the game. Yeah, yeah. But on the other hand, you're going to have Skirmishers with Ballistics, and this is just looking really rough for uh, Alfred. Yeah, and he's going to find out his opponent has Ballistics, because he just took that, he took damage there while he was moving to the side. Early castle for Jan Jishka, he's had a lot on stone. Um... I don't really think the castle is going to be that effective with the unique unit, but I think having a defensive castle is always good. And the camel oh, man, those camel archers are going to get wrecked by getting... the skirms. Okay, let's see the micro. If he can micro away from this, look at that. Look, okay, okay, look at this micro. Look at this micro from Alfred the Alpaca. Is this Leary? Is this Leary? Who is this? 
Could be some other players there. I mean, all my camel archers would be dead. That's for sure. But that was very impressive escape there from Alfred. I, I'm just trying to figure out what is the win condition for Alfred the Alpaca. He's only on seven camel archers. You're going to be running into skirmishers that are only going to be getting better and better upgrades. What are you going to do? Yeah. Drop a forward castle when your opponent already has a defensive castle? I don't see him getting to the Imperial Age faster. I'm just trying to figure out how Alfred plans on winning this game. Yeah, it, it's... It's fortunately a map where we have seen some pretty sizable eco comebacks because... Uh, it, there's a lot of distance between the two of you. So I think with skirmishers being the biggest weapon for Jan Jiska right now, he's not going to end the game with that anytime soon. This is the type of thing that maybe Alfred could do. Avoid the the uh, starting area. But oh man, I mean, there he's taking losses. Here he is almost taking losses. Uh, kind of a weird fight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, I, I'm with Man, you, though. 48 Eco against 74 is brutal. The issue is that with Ballistics in and plenty of range units of his own, Jan just can, can just send a few Cav Archers or Skirmishers back to defend against a couple Camel Archer raids, and it's mm -hmm. not like he's really ever going to be out of position. The Camel Archers kind of need to all be grouped up to do anything, and they just aren't really in sufficient numbers to accomplish a whole lot. God. Alfred has had aggression, has had great unit control, but has not had the Eco when compared to Jan Jishka in this series. That's been the difference. Even in the game that Alfred won on Bay, he was behind economically and then was able to take good fights, which then, of course, led to having the superior economy. But yeah. good luck pushing I mean, this the castle are right now. Find a nice Jeez. This is really painful. I, I think you have to, honestly... Yeah, th this is the type of energy we need right now from Alfred. Like, this is bad. Everywhere you go, there's fortification. That's a good fight. You got to go for something aggressive on the area that Jan Jiska has forgotten about, which is the starting area. So, oh God. Okay, well, there. Uh, never mind. He hasn't forgotten. There's skirmishers no. there. There was only going to be one villager to build the castle. And the GG is called Alfred the Alpaca, now down 3-1 to a, an incredibly well-rounded Jan Jiska. Yeah, man, and it's... Just one of another one of those instances where Jan Jishka getting too far ahead economically too quickly. I mean, you can't just lose that many villagers early on on a map with a very long rush distance. Jan Jishka just constantly going for the counterattacks. And it's like, it felt like Alfred was trying to do everything he could, but Jan Jishka was just prepared for everything. And once yeah. he got ahead, he just never, ever let up. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, like... Well, not unfortunately, but this is what I think is cool about the map. Because the priority there for Alfred in early feudal was win water. That priority for Jan Jishka was win land. And I feel like in a lot of maps, competitively, when there's fish, these days we tend to see the winning water approach end up winning. Because water can be so important. But there, to me, it just feels like there's so much potential for kills on land. It's so hard to defend from it that arguably the land ends up being more valuable. And uh, Jan Jishka with Japanese, again, lost the fishing ships, but then just snowballed so much control elsewhere. Impressive stuff. Will it be high tides? Will it be mud flow? Will he feel like maybe he could go to islands against Jan Jishka? Looks like well, the answer Well, you need to is... win them all at this point, and you are yeah. right, T90. It will be green versus yellow again, for one thing, but also going to be going to high tides. Yeah, and we, again, we're... I'm actually not opposed to having non-blue and red colors, but if we start as one color for the series, I'd prefer things be consistent. And uh, also yellow on this terrain, kind of tricky to see. So we're going to switch the colors back. Jan Zizka has gone for the Lithuanians here, and then we have the Malians for Alfred the Apaka on high tides. For those that watched Hidden Cup 4, we did make a tweak coming into Hidden Cup 5, and basically we made the south a whole lot more useful. In the south, you're going to see Hunt and Shorefish and uh, that was not there before. There's also the stone and gold. My thinking is, though, Ornlu, we are going to see a player like Alfred the Alpaca build a mill down here and use this. Like, well, it would be I, I think it was like because five to ten bills. You never really see it. Yeah. But on so, the other hand, games usually end up too, they're too fast, right? Yeah, that's true. Lithuanians have the extra food at the start. So you can go to Wood a bit earlier to then get the dock up. The Malians have the 
cheaper wood buildings. So I think the dock timings could be really good for both of them. So it's really hard to decide on, do you want to give up the Northern water to take the food in the South? Can you do both? It's very difficult balance. It is a tough one to consider, but that is a very early dock coming in here for Jan Zizka. Lithuanians, as you're saying, you can go to the wood much more uh, quickly. And we've seen players commit to the water to differing degrees on this map in particular. Uh, still, actually, lots of sheep scouting for Jan Zizka at this point, not uh, worried about any sort of laming attempt. Mm -hmm. But no, no dock at all right now for Alfred. Yeah, I think, like... Well, the Lithuanians should be able to get the villager over there a bit earlier because of how early they chop wood. So I think it's very likely that the villager for Alfred that's building the house will go to the shoreline. But I also think that Jan Jishka is going to be looking for that vill and already seems to have the scout on patrol there. So this villager has to be careful. You could place the dock uh, somewhere other than the middle island, by the way. Uh, there's shorefish everywhere if you want to take advantage of it but most likely the best stock is on that island and there she goes and like you have to have your scout with your villager here if you're out for the apaca you have to you have to know lithuanians will be there before you and that this is a big focus on the map but oh, <laughs> okay the scout is there anyways it seems like alfred knows what's up and alfred is indeed going to dock Never doubt the alpaca man. <laughs> that was the absolute perfect angle and timing. He couldn't necessarily know that. Scout going to see the other dock. But there's already a fishing ship out for Yanjishka. So that's going to bolster that early food economy. And as we get to feudal age, we have to say that this is probably a fairly even matchup. Both civs just probably going to go for whatever sort of random assor assortment of units for the hybrid map. I think it's going to be more focused on just surviving until castle age. Yeah, I agree. I think this matchup is dead even. Um, it's hard for me to really pick one. I think with the way Jan Jiska has played the Lithuanians, I prefer it uh, because it can give you a really nice edge in early feudal. And I, I think with how the bonuses play out, since the future docks will also be discounted and things are just very flexible with wood and gold for Malians, it would feel natural for Alfred to want to go two docks. So I'm curious to see if Jan Jiska kind of gives up water and tries to pressure on land because we're talking about the north we're talking about the south man this map is wide open through the middle and i feel like land aggression should be king well we haven't really seen yajishka completely forego water control because in i think all of the games he's eventually won water it's just been a matter of how he chooses to prioritize it over going for the land units yeah, But that villager leaving does indicate that, well, he's at least not at first going to be focusing on the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that villager leaving tells us that he, he may give up on it, as you said, and that is kind of rare. I think a lot of players never want to let their fish die. I think it always feels natural to try and contest for it in some way, but I really like this decision. And yeah, Alfred drops the dock. So Alfred will likely kill the fishing ships from Jan Jishka, but you're still investing wood and gold into ships instead of something on land. And we see the barracks for Jan Jishka at home. He's going to be going for archers, it seems. That does appear to be the case. Four vills on gold quite early on. Pretty interesting. Sees the barracks timing. Alfred needs to be better prepared for the incoming archers than he was in the last game. Now, you could say it's easier to defend on this map than on an evacuation, but at the same time, if he's focusing so heavily on the water, you need to make sure that you're at least having something to not just get like four archers with fletching in your base, because that's kind of what happened last time. Yeah, I think the key here is a little bit of walling, potentially a tower if you need it. Um, but you make two fire galleys and you stop. Two fire galleys have to happen, but then you stop and the rest of your wood goes into the barracks, the range. I, I could even see like an early tower on the gold or the wood being a really smart move right now if you're worried and that's great that's great scouting from alfred not willing to give this series up he sees the range so he will know it's archers yeah i mean this is something that we want to see from alfred as adapting to what his opponent's doing he was caught off guard in the last game really being so active with the scouting making sure the same thing isn't happening again we do have the third fire galley queued up which has me a little concerned that he's over investing that i make that number four I hope it's no more than that, because currently Jan Zizka is forgetting that water exists, or at least close to it, just running around with fishing ships. 
Yeah, I actually think Janjishka might actually hide his fish in the corner for later. He might not even try and drop off the food. But, I mean, we do have the barracks there. The range should be affordable now. Again, I think there's some concern you might need a tower. Also found it interesting that uh, Janjishka is milling hunt, but is not milling the hunt in the south. Is actually milling the hunt in the back of his base. So he scouted a lot this game. He didn't actually push in the deer. And he's going to know now that his opponent is late on the archer range and is looking to disrupt this. And the first archer and spearman's already here. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of what happened last time, right? You're just dealing with more units than you are prepared to stop all at once. You have the scout coming forward here. It's going to do a nice job of blocking the villager. She's still a couple more hits, but yeah, great control right there. But Ooh. nice blocking. Oh, Ooh. oh, and the villager calculated. Gets saved and all of a sudden, like, Alfred the Alpaca has fishing ships working, right? So you have the fishing ships there. Uh, looks like Janjiska's gone a little bit too far and has missed the food there. So, yeah, nice defense from Alfred. We'll have archers and skirms out. And also did scout the south. So I think Alfred will actually have vision on if there's any uh, hunt dying in the south. Should have an idea on if Janjiska's down there. Yeah, but we have Fletching incoming right now for Janjishka. That was only the first attack. It's still going to be five archers to two skirms, one archer without Fletching. Those fishing ships seem to have been discovered by the fire galleys. We'll have to see how many fish Alfred the Alpaca can add behind this while not dying on the land, because that's still a very exposed forward gold on a hill. Yeah, that's, that, that's why I was thinking maybe a tower would make sense. He chose never to do that. Honestly, I mean, he pulls away here. Uh, as long as the archers don't make it through, it should be okay. The spearman's dead now. He is fletching as well. He should defend from this. And I don't mind Alfred's position. I am very curious to see, though, how many farms he adds around his, his town center. How does he deal with the transitional aspect? Because in the previous game, man, it was so extreme. And this is a perfect example of it. Yeah, he needs farming eco, which I guess he couldn't do because he didn't have a mill just yet. Well, that's going to be a dead villager on the other side. She was trying to build a house. And again, it's these archers just walking across the middle of the map. It's just taking the shortest distance from route A to B. But if you're not prepared to defend that, well, you're going to get wrecked. And right there, that is some excellent micro from Jan Zeshka. He's still down three bills, but we got double dock at the south, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, I mean, new meta stuff. This is the first time we've seen it. I love that. I mean, building the dock isn't bad. If you have villagers around it, I wonder if Alfred knows about the other dock. Can we see his point of view? Does Alfred know that Jan Zizka has a dock there? So he's adding a demo expecting there to be vills, which is something we expected too. That's interesting to blindly add a demo, but Jan Zizka looking doesn't see anything. He also seems to have an idea that this could happen. So, so many interesting things happening. It almost feels like these two know each other and know what the other one would do, in all honesty. Yeah, maybe they did practice together at some point. Got another oh. dock incoming, though. Oh! Oh! Three <laughs> villagers get found! Beautiful for Alfred, who still has fishing ships. So he knew that Jan Zizka would be down there, and he took full advantage with a sneaky dock. What a play. Oh, that was really pretty right there. Now, we do have some more houses coming in. Completely off of gold is Alfred the Alpaca. Is slightly ahead in resources collected, though, for, like, what feels the first time this series. Uh, <laughs> that actually isn't really worth it, because you're spending 70 wood and 50 gold. It's until emotional it damage. 50 food. <laughs> it, listen, Ornlu, it's emotional damage, okay? It's not, <laughs> not worth it. It sends a message. <laughs> but I... Dude, I am getting some big teammate vibes because of the, the amount of docking we're seeing. Um, maybe other players just banned this map and, and they and their practice sessions thought that this is what would always happen. But we've got fire galleys from Janjishka in the south. So he's willing to like fight with actual navy there. It's not what I would have thought would ever have happened here. Yeah, I mean, I, I love it, right? I mean, it's we're seeing the map in a different light, which is always what you want to see when you reuse a tournament map for, uh, you know, from several years ago. But we're yep. looking at an 8 vil lead right now for Alfred the Alpaca. His skirms are not going to be enough to actually push out across the map, but it, with a couple of spearmen, he can better defend himself against the uh, enemy scout cavalry. Bloodline's coming in, though, for Jan Jishka. He wants to keep things in Feudal Age with another sneak dock. 
Wow. Okay, so we're going to see a sneak dock from Yanjishka in the north to go kill those fish. Will be tricky to do that because there's still leftover fire galleys from Alfred. We've got full saturation of the food in the south right now for Yanjishka on the fish and on the hunt. And then we have massive scouts, massive archer and skirm numbers for both. And still really no sign of Castle Age being anywhere really close, at least for Yanjishka. But I I'm again impressed with Alfred's uh, control here. He's just got to be careful. The Bloodlines is in on the scouts. And if his spearmen go down, could lose his skirms. Uh, it seems like he's actually okay. I think he could back up to his TC. The scouts won't accomplish much more. Then the archers can't dive in. At the very least... Alfred is being forced back into his base, but as you were saying, T90, that's the Castle Age. It's going to be coming in as soon as that vill is done. And our Jan Jishka, with his heavy, heavy emphasis on Feudal Age, isn't going to be getting there anytime soon. I mean, he's double docking the south. He added a second dock in the north, and that's two stable scouts. Whoa! Wow, this is crazy. I mean, Jan Jishka is certainly going to have the food. Right? We know that. Um, so as we see the highlight fade in here with the demos, this is something that Alfred can't do anymore. Nice finds there from him. But like the main engagements right now, I don't think that Jan Zizka is going to be able to take many good fights because of how well-structured Alfred's base is. And with Crossbow and Bodkin for Alfred? Uh, Leary, the Alpaca with Cross... Oh, sorry, Alfred, the Alpaca with Crossbow? <laughs> I think it's going to be tough for Jan Zizka to hold from this. Yeah, I'm... Again, I love the resilience of Alfred the Alpaca. I mean, he has just been kicked around in a lot of these games by Jan Jishka just playing perfectly, but never faltering in that unit control. Wow. Making sure he always has a plan. I mean, jeez. What? I mean, He's saving all these bills. Okay, he loses one. But the skirm's in front, focus firing down the archers. The archers behind killing the scouts. The villagers repairing and then being pulled away in the perfect moments. Beautiful play from Alfred the Alpaca. Jan Jishka wasted all of his food on those scouts now. And Castle Age, only 20 seconds away for Alfred. This could end the game here if he moves forward with these crossbows. Yeah, it seems like maybe Alfred has realized that there are some fire galleys going to harass his own fishing ships. But like you were saying earlier, he still has that navy left over from Feudal Age. Happy Castle Age, Mr. Alfred the Alpaca with a little bit of market usage. Jan Jushka can click up to Castle Age himself. But it is going to be over an entire Castle Age research time behind his opponent. I think that's an early university that, that's coming in. And right now, the ball is in Alfred's court. He yeah. should probably try and make some damage happen right now. Yeah, and I like how Jan is still trying to distract in some ways, because Alfred may feel forced to go chase those archers down. But um, th this is just typical for Alfred. He's like, I'm not going to stay at home, thank you very much. I'm going to be in your base with ranged units, which Alfred has done every single game. And now Jan Jishka needs to defend for two minutes with pretty much having no army to deal with this. There's no way that you could prep yourself for... You you can keep the villagers safe, Ornlu, but your eco will be completely out of whack when you make it to Castle Age if you have to pull that many villagers uh, away from farms and gold. Especially because it's the food that's not incoming right now for Janjushka. He's having to have a lot of bills on wood, which doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. And you need food to make cavalry, and that's, of course, what Janjushka and especially Lithuanians are going to want to accomplish here in the mid-game. <laughs> this is where he's getting his food right now. And there's knights, and there's crossbows there trying to find some damage. They are finding the damage, and Alfred the Alpaca just on two town centers at home, producing more vills, adding more eco, catching up on upgrades now. And now he's underneath the tower! And it seems like Alfred the Alpaca's not going to go away quietly. I, I get the fight for Jan Zizka, but I don't think he's going to be able to upgrade most of these units here. Not with two-thirds of his eco idle, there's still knights running around, and this is just such brilliant early Castle Age execution here. For Alfred the Alpaca, he's getting the quick ballistics upgrade as the Malians, and this is just Alfred saying, no, 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 this series ain't over yet. Yeah, and with the level of play that Alfred can show, I fully believe that we could go to a seventh game. Obviously, if he wins this one, it goes 3-2, but... Alfred the Alpaca's ridiculous talent. There's no doubt about it. Jan Jiska is going to have his work cut out for him to get that extra win. Is choosing to continue to fight. Um, from what we can see, it's uh, 
looking a little bleak, but uh, it, it is, <laughs> he has his, he's within his right to fight until he knows he's completely dead. He doesn't know how good the situation is like we do. Of course, and right now Crossbow still just maintaining that really strong position, camping the main gold right there of Jan Jiska's. Jan Jiska trying to add a second TC, but I love that Alfred, he's not all in by any stretch of the imagination. He's adding his own TC. Number three, he's still got six fishing ships working, and this is just a player who's so confident in their unit control and their execution, and there's GG. We're not having a 4-1 T90. No, we're not, and I think we can get to seven games. Alfred the Alpaca played amazing there. And, you know, we said it, right? We said before he picked Evacuation for the previous game that he could easily uh, perform this way on a map which has that primary focus on land. I'm still very curious now. Obviously, we're not going to get the reveal on who these players are until that the conclusion of the tournament, but the fact that Zish could dock to have Vils down there and then looked to see almost with a vill as if his opponent was going to dock. Now, it could have been a mill he was looking for. But then we had Alfred docking before knowing his opponent was there with anything and adding the demos. It was so interesting to see three docks in the south. That it feels like there's either a meta that we haven't seen yet here in Hidden Cup 5 that you know players maybe banned out the map or were saving. Or that those two players kind of know each other by now, having played at that point four and a half games against each other change the colors <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean it gets me excited right it gets me excited hopefully it gets the fans excited out there rooting for alfred the alpaca and yajishka it would feel fitting to have the game seven be the mirror matchup but it's Jan Jishka's choice and Jan Jishka goes for his number one home map pick this is the first player to actually pick islands as a home map all hidden cup five and it is an Armenian's war. It is possible uh, for both players with their first pick on the draft to pick the same sieve. I did that because I felt like there would be some sieves out there that... Well, the, the first reason I did that is because players have a training period and there's new maps they're training on. And I didn't want players like secret strats to potentially be banned out or unavailable. But also... Sieves like Chinese on Mudflow or like Armenians on Islands are seen as really strong. And I also didn't want Civ wins to be as common as a theme. So both these players had their first blind pick. And when that was revealed, they both picked the same thing or lose. So this makes our job easy. Uh, please tell me what you think about the Armenians and why they're so strong on water. Well, if you guys aren't familiar with Armenians as they are one of the newest civilizations, they just have so many bonuses going for them on water. They get early savings on their mule card drop-off site, which is similar to Japanese. They have more efficient eco upgrades, so you're kind of getting like Celts-like lumberjacks. And you have galleys that can fire an additional projectile, which is basically one extra damage. And then even later on, you have the power of extra range on your own galleons and super good demos. So there's just so many things going for Armenians in a full water map. And I think that's before you talk about, like, the uh, fact that you can make a monastery, which gives you a fortified church. Um, or, sorry, you make a fortified <laughs> church instead of a monastery, <laughs> and you get a relic instantly. Uh, you can make a um, warrior priest, which is cheaper than a monk, to pick up the relics. Uh, there's just a lot of different things that you can do with this sieve. And I think the wood eco and the gold eco of this sieve is bonkers. And you're going to be spending wood and you're going to be spending gold uh, if you're making ships. So that's just how it goes. Now, already, I don't want to get too excited for myself here, but already, those that heard my little pre-match prediction, I could see it happening. Because you have Alfred the Alpaca, a player who loves his archers, docking on the front. So he's thinking, I'm guessing, more along the lines of being aggressive on water. And Jan Jiska has been more of the economic player in the series. And he doesn't want anything to do with the front of his island. So he's going to dock the back here. This could mean a fast castle for Jan Jishka because the fishing ships will be on the back. It could also be a, it could also mean that there's going to be a transport from Jan Jishka and he's going to try and take this to the opponent's island. Yeah, I wonder about that fast castle though. Ooh. Because we've seen it have a lot of success as players are just unable to apply that much pressure early on. Also, Alfred already 13 seconds idle TC time. Not exactly a perfectly clean Dark Age for this map. 
it really is going to come down to the dynamic of landing because we've seen that um, even if you don't start with a transport ship, turns out you can still go for a lot of early landing shenanigans. So Alfred the Alpaca using his scout to bring in the boar. So that means less villager idle time, but now his scout's weak. So this definitely indicates a fast rush then. You wouldn't give up the scout HP if you were going to transport. And you wouldn't be too worried about a villager walking to get a boar if you were going for any slow builds. Uh, Vinchester is a big player that does that. Um, so that that came to my mind. I could maybe see a player like Leary doing it, but Vinchester did that even on Arena. Apparently, Armenians are one and one versus Armenians. Thank you, stats guy, for the uh, important data here. We'll see if Armenians get the better of Armenians here in this game. But yes, um, you know, one thing I want to talk about here with the potential of the transport. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, uh, OK. Well, th that boar is not cooperating. Now, don't shoot it with the TC, Alfred because it is weak already. <gasps> oh my God, Ooh. did he calculate that? What was oh, he thinking man. there? Alfred, this is freaking me out, man. I think that went down to the final arrow. Could have easily lost that boar. Um, but to complete my thought, if you go back, Doc Transport, I am an expert in transporting. Uh, I, I think it is really difficult to have the transport ship timing down because it takes so long to get your transport in front of your islands and then pick up whoever you're taking with you and and get to where you want to be. So it seems like just pure fast castle here for Jan Zizka, or just a very delayed feudal. Uh, I don't see a world where this isn't a fast castle. You're going up to six fishing ships in the Dark Age. He does have only six bills on food, though, at this point. So yeah. maybe it's one of those builds where you just go for a few galleys in Feudal Age and then just try to click up to Castle Age quickly after that. Whereas this mm -hmm. is a much more traditional uh, I want to go for a, a galley war build from Alfred the Alpaca, except he has 27 seconds idle time, which is really ugly on this map. Yeah, and your scout's super weak, which might not end up yeah. playing a role like we said, but that is definitely something that I feel is is odd. Um, well, I mean, already we're seeing maybe Alfred the Alpaca is not comfortable here. But if Alfred the Alpaca can win this, then it's his home map for game number seven. I like the greed approach from Jan Jishka, though, if it is some of the players people have been saying. Um, this, in some ways, eliminates Hera a little bit more in my mind. I know he can have his greed, but eight fishing ships. I'm thinking through qualifier players. I could see Sato playing like Jan Jishka is right now. Um, I could see a player like, not a qualifier player, but Jordan or Viper maybe opting for the safe back fish boom. But it could be uh, very risky to do that, of course, with three docks from Alfred making galleys right now. Yeah, I mean, but look at those resources, T90. That's not a fast castle. It's just, yeah. whoa, slow fire galleys. Isn't this just going to lose horribly to a bunch of galleys with Alfred the Alpaca? That is super micro? weird. Um, okay, so here's my thinking. So I don't like the slow fires for the fights. However... If you could get the Castle Age two minutes faster, losing your eight fishing ships doesn't actually matter because you're going to kill your opponent's fishing ships anyways, most likely. So the thinking here is collect more res, just passing, uh, which he's already done, and then turn this into a fast castle, a faster castle. But this is a, a faster castle, ideally, for Janjishka that isn't without actually some resistance. I, I think that's kind of the logic here. So... We'll see. Uh, but there's the market. Yeah, he definitely... This is a not the typical fast castle, but he's definitely having that in mind right now. My concern with this build for Jan Jishka is that you're still going to lose your fishing ships at this rate. And you invested into eight fishing ships, which is a you know very sizable number. And the fishing ship... I don't know if it was intentional to send the fishing ship over there, but if it was, making sure his opponent didn't go with the front dock, I think, eh, that's a cute little move, although maybe based off of the uptime, you can assume your opponent with a back dock mm -hmm. went for a back dock in the first place. And right now, it is just going to be Galley City, especially the Armenian Galleys, getting that extra one damage uh, with their second projectile. Uh, it is going to be tough for Jan Jishka to take fights until he gets the actual fire ship upgrade. Yeah, I think Jan Jishka is going to sell a stone here. He's just missing the food he needs. Now, it's still only three galleys here. Now he's got two fires. He might have a fire coming from the other side. His fishing ships are still working. Yeah, sells a stone. 
And now is going to get the little surrounds. Armenian galleys are so good. Nice kill there. That's our first kill of the game. But the second kill of the game comes in from Jan Zizka. And he's up. So I, I actually don't mind this so much for Jan Zizka. Uh, even if he loses his fish, like I said, that faster <laughs> castle can leave oh, a lot that. of things. Did you see that fishing ship block on the galleys? That was... Uh... That was the civilians uh, taking matters into their own hands, saying, no, 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 you are not escaping. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I what I consider to be a possible issue here for Alfred is if you have feudal age fires against castle age fires. Wow, great micro from Yajishka. He saves that. If you have uh, feudal age, be feudal age with the fires, you can actually trade somewhat decently with a couple demos and hold. But if you have a big group of galleys against upgraded fires, then you could start to have some problems. But of course, as I say that, I'm realizing the queue for Yanjishka is actually mainly galleys. So he too wants to go galleys, which I don't actually love. I, I think the fires should do better, but maybe against Armenians, they don't only. Maybe I'm not factoring that in because of the extra bolt. Yeah, that could just make the fights a little bit more difficult. But so far, these fire ships feel like I've been get they've been getting more value than they probably should. At the same time, once the actual fight's starting, this is some good micro here for Alfred the Alpaca. He does have Fletching, but War Galley going to come in immediately here, as well as a transport ship. Whoa, interesting! Uh, a transport ship from the front. This this Janjishka guy's tricky, man. Like. Really hard to nail down what style we're gonna see. I expected more of the defensive opening with the um with the back docks, but I mean he certainly can micro himself. His eco is solid, he's chasing all this down. Does have to be careful with his fish, of course, because Alfred the Alpaca is looping around, but Alfred the Alpaca has not clicked up yet. Transporting when you don't see what's happening on the map, though, that is like that's got some risk associated with it. <laughs> yeah, you bet. That said, I think it's just going to be for picking up some relics from the middle of the map. He's got warrior priests queued up, and to his credit, I don't think Jan is going to be suffering uh, many losses here, if any. Uh, is he? As he's going to get his war galleys going. He's going to have Bodkin in right now, and right now, it's it doesn't feel like Alfred got the damage done he wanted to. Yeah, seriously. I mean, this has been near perfect for Jan Jishka. There's no other way to say it. He has kept his eight fishing ships alive. He has defended every attack. He is now pushing out to attack with the superior navy right now. This has been brilliant, and he's made it look very easy. I don't think this is something that happens all that frequently. You would expect the player who's later to the numbers to have some problems here, but it was just the distance problem for Alfred the Alpaca, I suppose. And you see the engagements coming in, and this is not a good engagement for Alfred the Alpaca, and Alfred... Must be worried right now that his tournament life is going to end to Jan Zizka if he doesn't find some type of an answer. Was it really that bad of a fight, though? The KD has gotten closer, not further apart. The I Navy think numbers bad. are still quite competitive. I think it's bad. You have no momentum right now. But I agree, the numbers of Navy can swing things once he gets his upgrades. And what is this from Jan Zizka? He's transporting a warrior priest and the scouts? Is he trying to steal a relic? <laughs> what? Oh, uh, I mean, I'd love that if that's the case. That is that is called some very good long-term planning. What? Uh, War Galley immediately on the way for Alfred the Alpaca, who has not stopped with his galley production. And he if you're focusing on getting relics and playing the super uh, long game, you still run the risk of just dying right away. Is there loom? Does he have loom? Uh, Warrior priest attack. The scout attacks. I don't know if there's loom. There's uh, no, no loom. Not, not with that difference. <laughs> uh oh. What? What? Sure. The scout Why not? warrior priest attack from Jan Jishka. What a strat! And he might actually see the relic in a moment. And if he sees it, he might just go right back to his transport ship. We'll see if he can get home. But yeah, I am very impressed with Jan Jishka here. This is like that is a next level thing that Alfred the Alpaca was never expecting. Absolutely not. The one thing, though, again is that you still have the galley number advantage as Alfred the Alpaca. And he's continuing yeah. to take decent fights there. Those uh, walls do need to come in in time, but just getting a couple warrior priests to defend yourself is in this Armenian mirror shouldn't be all that big of a deal. And right now, you still have Alfred trying to maintain some control of water. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. I think that to, in some ways, Janjishka, because of the shenanigans, might fall behind on water, which is very important on this map. Big navy there for Alfred the Alpaca. The units died on Alfred the Alpaca's island. And resources collected, still fairly close. Janjishka did get the second town center up faster. But Janjishka may be concerned that uh, he's not going to win the galley war, so he's combining galleys with the fires, which I don't hate. But again, against Armenians, we'll see how well that does. Yeah, of course, you can just shoot and scoot as Alfred the Alpaca is doing right now. Those fires are slower than war galleys. Uh, a little bit odd with the war galley regrouping behavior right there. But regardless, you have a few more sailing around the back and to try and go for those fishing ships and help even out that eco difference because militarily, Alfred the Alpaca is at very at the very worst keeping pace with his opponent. Yeah, now, usually islands, we see a lot of complexities. It is, of course, very easy for someone to lose the game quickly on this map. But at the end of the day, when you get to the highest level, they're trying to find ways, just like other maps, to get a lead that takes them towards the late game. And so that is what Jan Jishka is focused on. Now, I'm just concerned about his food eco. I'm just noticing he doesn't have that many farms, at least what the stats are telling me. So I wonder what the food collected is going to look like, because that, that eco there, he might have the TCs, he might have the workers. That's not set up. Neither player actually is really set up to be an imp anytime soon behind this. Well, both heavily focusing there on the war galley production. Notably, though, we have ballistics in for Janjishka, absolutely huge in a war galley fight. And also, both players have picked up all of the relics on their islands. Of course, Armenians get one relic for free, so it is going to be three relics v three relics until either player can try and make the landing happen. You see that warrior priest trying to go for it right now. Maybe they'll be able to sneak them back. Yeah, should be able to. And, I mean, it might be even. It might be five relics for both because Alfred the Alpaca is also thinking the same thing. He also has two warrior priests, and he also has a transport ship somewhere, so I think it will be his turn. I mean, we added the extra relics to avoid stalemates and to give the player with water control more of an advantage. If it's five relics v five relics, that's going to be dead even. <laughs> you add... Oh, so, man. Hold on. You added more relics to prevent a stalemate, and then added an even number of relics so players can split them 50-50. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, Ornlu, I get it, all right? I get it, but that rarely happens, okay? The idea was more relics equals more gold income, which can actually help you when there's a wood stalemate. But yes, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. We'll uh, you know, even. Just, I just ask the questions as they come to me, man. There is no <laughs> pointed argument made behind them. <laughs> well, I mean, only one relic's going to make it back home, and one of the... Warrior Priest went down, and man, these are some crazy engagements right now. And the eco is better for Janjishka. They both have so little farming eco. They just don't have the resources to justify it when this has become a massive galley war. This is very unique. Yeah, but at, still, behind all of this, Janjishka, as we've seen throughout this entire series, is pulling ahead. He's got slightly better fights. He now is going to be ahead in resources collected. He's still going to be producing more villagers. And although Janjishka might struggle to close out the game... Aha! Whoa! Well, there you go. Thank you, Janjishka. Thank you, Janjishka. Sorry, go ahead, Ornlu. I just got a little... <laughs> just got a little oh, wait! Or Callie's coming in from the other oh, side! Oh, no! No, no, no! Go, oh! go, go! <laughs> oh! Oh my god. He goodness. doesn't have ballistics. Beautiful reaction from both, but because of the lack of ballistics, that uh, transport will be able to make it home as we have a big ship battle in the middle of the map. And it's really hard to judge ship numbers in AoE 2 in these big fights, but it's actually an enormous lead right now for Jan Jishka, and Alfred cannot take this fight. Yeah, and, and he doesn't know. You know, he may feel as though he's behind, so he might want to force the issue. He was micro-nerding like crazy there with the back and forth galleys, but it, the concerns just continue to grow for Alfred. He's probably like, man, if I can just win this, we can go to my home map, Mudflow, where I'm the better player, and I move on. And then I could accomplish so many great things, potentially. But, wow, little counter warrior priest raid. That's kind of fun. Uh, but the Galleon number, or Galley number, rather, is not looking good for Alfred at all. The Galleon number? No, the Galley number. It's the war Galley number, T90. <laughs> uh, well, oh, yeah. yeah, true. <laughs> You, you you picked the one <laughs> you picked everything but the right unit in the line. <laughs> Ornlu Ornlu's doing everything he can not to be invited back right now, guys. That's what we're. <laughs> That's 
Hey man, that, this actually, is already the last series I'm casting with that, you. That must be it. Free. Yeah, this is. Yeah, that must be it. You're not in the schedule for the rest of them, and he's just throwing throwing blows at me right now. But no, I I I get it. I deserve it. And uh, right now, Janjishka feels like he deserves to win this game. It was such a cool opening. An opening that you see from the experienced Islands players. He's got 45 war galleys right now, Ornlu. And a lot of that is just his macro behind this. He's got 2,000 more resources to play with. He's got the better trades. And he just has so many more ships. The one thing that Alfred has going for him, though, and we've seen this happen in previous sets, look at those resources, T90. He's going to click up to Imp right as soon as he finishes that building. Ooh, okay, so... So normally, I get super hyped in these situations. The problem I see here is he's not on stone to drop a dock to protect a shoreline. And he's not up against fire ships, is he? He's up against war galleys. So I think it's very good. It's going to be very difficult for him to have docks up and to get the mass. But do Armenians get fast fire? Do you know? They do not. It's the one thing they don't have. Okay, well, there's all the docks. Holy crap. I mean, I don't know how he had the wood for that. Okay, so I guess you have to go back into galleys, or you could try, like, a cheeky, heavy demo play? Hmm. Uh, I mean, it's tough, but you do have that extra blast radius once you get uh, your unique tech. At the same time, you can't get your unique tech if you don't have a castle, which Alfred does yep. not have. So, yep. yeah, there's, there's going to need to be some crazy efficient fights coming in the near future because you have a, a small 52 warship deficit to overcome. Yeah, yeah, it's a big problem too. You're going to lose villagers pretty soon. Obviously, Jan Jiska's thinking, well, he's got to be back docking because he's not doing anything from the front. And he's going to find this and yeah, 52 against one right now. I think players have GG'd over less, but Alfred knows that if he does call the GG, he is out of Hidden Cup. And I, I mean, any of the guesses spinning around in my mind for who Alfred is, all insanely big names. And, uh, you know, Alfred not being in the future of Hidden Cup, uh, Hidden Cup 5 rather, would be a disappointment to many fans out there. And these warrior priests now from Yanjishka going to attack after they picked up their relics <laughs> makes matters even worse. And Alfred the Alpaca. He makes it to Imp, but he barely has the resources for what he wants to upgrade here. Oh, shipwright immediately. This is Alfred saying, I'm actually not going to be able to trade efficiently enough with you in the short run. I need to play the long game and really look at my wood efficiency. <laughs> not another game where you have to talk about wood efficiency, T90. <laughs> <laughs> but, but on Highlands, it yeah. does matter. It, does, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> I just... You know, wood efficiency is great and all with the shipwright upgrade, but if you can't take half the resources on your island, it's significantly worse. I uh, would like to see Jan Jishka maybe castle one of the neutral islands, start to take resources there. But obviously, I mean, he's still in castle age and he's winning these fights. So he, he's in a great position right now to win this game. He just has to ensure that he doesn't get surprised by Alfred the Alpaca's units looping around. We've got Galleon on the way. Bracers on the way too. Ooh, that's a that's a forward castle from Yanjishka. That's Ooh. interesting. Well, I guess it's not going to be scouted right away. But Galleon's coming in, Bracer is in, and you should see the villager there. And Alfred the Alpaca's had great vision so far in terms of noticing what's going on on the map. But that just means you can queue up a trebuchet right away. So that is a little bit odd. Now the one thing that <laughs> she is goes... going. <laughs> yep. Great, great job there. The one thing that is going to be going in favor of Alfred the Alpaca, or at least not necessarily in favor of Jan Jishka, is that it's really hard to close out a game of islands, even if you're ahead. Yeah. So maybe Alfred can just try and stall this one out. Yeah, I mean, it's maybe... I mean, Alfred can make trebs already. So that castle there from Jan Jishka could be seen as a waste. I think that the lead for Jan Jishka is pretty sizable, so he could probably still get away with losing a castle, but... A lot of times, like, I think the more experienced island players would have actually castled one of these islands. This is not the first time in this series that Jan Jishka's tried to go for the kill. Remember the Bay game where he went forward castle and ended yep. up throwing the game. Well, not, not throwing the game, but he ended up falling apart. So it is just something notable 
We'll see if this castle does much for him. Maybe he could produce some uh, composite bowmen out of the castle or something, but still no galleon upgrade. Needs to click that. We'll click that now. And in a minute, they will be on even strengths with their uh, navies. Yeah, and the ship right coming in quickly for Janjushka as well. Dotting his I's and crossing his T's in terms of making sure that he is setting himself up to win as best as possible. He's taking resources from his opponent's island. Uh, I like the fact that the Galleons are there to help protect the trebuchet. He's not, he wasn't taking the shortest route from his castle to his opponent's castle. He was making it so he can actually protect his own units. Now, there's think, Cilician fleet on the way. I, I think Alfred can still win this game. He's getting that tech Absolutely. there, which we haven't seen from Janjushka. Janjushka built his castle forward. So he can't get that unique tech if he loses that castle. Now that is not a good fight. Not a good fight for Alfred. We spoke too soon. Oh my goodness, what a battle. Even my chemistry <laughs> isn't in for Janjushka yet. Alfred getting completely massacred, even though he has the better tech. But still, like, Alfred could take the neutral islands in theory. There's, there's some possibilities, especially if that castle for Janjushka doesn't research the unique tech. Well, uh, Trev War is just still going on. There isn't another trebuchet on the way for Alfred the Alpaca, as he is having to spend a lot of his wood there on Navy. But you just can't keep taking bad fights like this. You need to sail away, go back to your docks where it's a bit safer, and try and just start to eke out some more efficient fights. But right now, it's just, you know, we're looking at a 60 pop difference. This is tough to overcome. Yep, and there were villagers. They wanted to take the island. Maybe if you really feel like this is horrible for you, you could try and drop a castle on Janjushka's base. I wouldn't hate it. Um, here's the big fight, and, and poor Alfred, he tried to back away to where his reinforcements were coming, but he's just been found anyways, and Janjushka's not allowing him to rest at all. And Alfred's new unit, I don't know if Alfred's even noticing this, I think he's distracted right now, and everything he sends forward continues to get picked off. Things are looking more and more bleak for Alfred. Yeah, tournament life on the line, so you don't want to give up if you aren't absolutely sure there's no way back. Galleon's trying to go for a little bit of a raid, but you're still looking at a 50 military deficit. Your opponent has a castle on your island, bombarding your houses even. And it looks like the trebuchet is down, and at this point, Alfred's running out of resources, he's running out of production, and there is the GGGL next. Jan Jishka going to be winning this series 4-2. And we thought this could happen because he's the first player that picked Islands as a home map first and saved it till the very end. Um, had Alfred the Alpaca made something happen here, maybe then Alfred would have been favored in the final game. But Jan Jishka able to get enough wins on the board ahead of time, wins this one 4-2. And I cannot wait to see what people guess for these players because I think these were two massive names. Maybe the the closest in terms of the... the um, the level of aggression we've seen all Hidden Cup 5 so far, though it's, I'm thinking back to other games, and that's going to be really tricky to say. It started all off with the Spearman Skirm Rush from Jan Jishka, and Alfred the Opaka was hoping for a standard Arabia game. Look at this. Jan Jishka doesn't lose a Jeez. single vill. Defense from this without the, you know, good enough tech, and also at the same time was using a scout to kill two villagers in Alfred the Opaka's base. That is insane. Yeah, I mean, just the unit control on both sides of the series has been crazy. At different points, either player was able to get the better of the other, but this game was all Jan Jishka. He took amazing fights, he got a huge eco lead, and it really felt like just this set the pace for the series where Alfred the Alpaca was always the guy trying to react to what Jan Jishka was doing. Yep, and then this game, Alfred kind of had a good start, right? Opened up to kill fishing ships. Killed quite a few of them, fell behind massively in Eco, and then just ran forward. There was Scorpions, there was Lycav, there was Manganels on the field. He somehow made it past all of them. And then Jan Jishka started to fall apart a little bit. This micro from Alfred is the micro of a top three, four, five archer player. I don't know who you're going to say this guy is, but like in and out of the TC with his crossbows there, very confident against bunch of, uh, a big bunch of Siege. And it was actually the condo raids that I think eventually did Zizka in here. Yeah, that absolutely was the case. Just not able to use the mobility there with his elephants. Game number three now. This was another example of Jan Zizka having a great strategy, going for the defensive approach with all those walls as Malay, having the fish boom behind it, and just having way too much stuff for Alfred to ever be able to deal with. 
Yeah, and you know, we, we were showing the highlights of the big moves on the sides. Anjishka was fish booming back at home. I think he ended up having 30 fishing ships in one pond in the south with Malay fish traps. Alfred put on a lot of aggression, did a really nice job. Honestly, I felt like you couldn't have asked much more of him, but every time he tried to deny something, something like this would happen. And that was just so good from Jan Jishka. Oh man, and, and this game, man, it was all Jan Jishka, let's be honest. It might've lost some fishing ships, but he knew that on evacuation, villagers would be walking across here and he never let Alfred the Alpaca rest. Absolutely not. Alfred on the run here, just never able to develop his economy this game. It was just, whenever you look at Alfred's eco, there was always some sort of unit from Jan Chishka killing his villagers, and you just can't fall that far behind at a game at this level economically. There's no this, real way you can come back. This was also Alfred's home map. So this is the game, this is the map that stands out to me for Alfred, because it seemed like Jan Chishka was way more prepared for this map than Alfred was but I'm sure like we thought Camel Archers was gonna maybe give Alfred a chance and maybe that's what he had felt in his practice games leading up to this I did get a nice trap here and a lot of players aren't getting these traps a lot of players are coming back from losing 19 eco so he did that but as always Jan Jishka just felt like he was prepared on the other side for sure. I mean, you can take good fights with Camel Archers, but at the end of the day, you just don't have the resources. This game, though, was great from Alfred the Alpaca. Good unit control, getting the big boom there on the villagers, taking the water and just making sure he had that advantage. And there was no way that Janjishka could get into his groove, so to say, in playing that more macro-oriented game. Yeah, and it, it honestly felt like then you know, a lot of players, when they go up 3-1, they're just going to finish off the opponent. But... Alfred the Alpaca, that was a really nice fight for him. His opponent invested a lot, and then all the momentum was swinging back towards Alfred as he dominated an early castle, moved on to islands. And like Orlu, we talked about it in the buildup, but in hindsight, Jan Jiska's approach of the, of the fires to hold and then the galleys later on was actually really smart here. Yeah, I mean, based off of the timings, Alfred just couldn't get enough galleys there fast enough to really kill those fishing ships. So most of the, you know, late feudal age through mid castle age, it was Jan Jishka working with eight fishing ships to four. It means that he can send more bills on wood and just keep those warship numbers going behind it. And once again, it's another instance of Jan Jishka getting too large of a lead economically. Yeah, it's so good. This this player here, Jan Jishka, he, <laughs> he, he has the aggression when he needs it. But he has the eco to back it up. And that is what the best Age of Empires 2 players have. Always felt like he was thinking about the economy more than Alfred was at various points. But this is pretty much the final fight of this game, final fight of the series, where Jan Jishka mopped up everything Alfred had left. And that means that Jan Jishka moves on to the quarterfinals and Alfred the Alpaca is out. So now I'm wondering... <laughs> Thank you. What's Thank you, production, pasta? for that. Um, I, I don't, I don't actually get it. <laughs> al, al, al pasta, al pasta, Alfredo. Oh, okay. oh. Alfredo. Ah, okay. Oh, that's okay. good. That's Alfredo. good. That's good. Nice job production. Yeah, well played. Thanks for making this look stupid. We, we needed that. But uh, now yeah. I'm curious on how things go. So before we do the votes, can we please see the votes over the last or the previous three days and see the bracket? Um, because we've done a vote every single time to see what people think. And I've, we have the percentages there. So some of these weren't landslides, but so far everyone has voted uh, or every series we have seen players voted as a different player with no repeats. I'm curious to see if that will change. The doubt at 85% was very definitive in people's minds. The MBL at 80% was very definitive in people's minds. But some of these votes are sub- 30% or sub 35% majority of them actually. So we, we're now going to give everyone an opportunity to vote and uh, exciting times for those watching on YouTube. I see we have like 7,000 people watching on YouTube. Now your votes now count as well. We uh, shout out please to Grim and everyone involved with the polling system we have here, whether you are watching on YouTube or Twitch, typing a number in the chat will go towards our poll here. You vote who Alfred the Alpaca was and vote away, people. Uh, and if you choose to re-vote, it will override your initial vote.
But I think it's a big name, Ornlo. I think it's a really good player yep. who's accomplished a lot throughout his career. I think that the the safest money is on Leary. I will say, I think you said it earlier in the cast, that this Hidden Cup in particular feels like it's a lot more difficult to guess players than in, in previous editions yep. of the event. And I mean, that just makes it more fun, I think, for everyone involved. But yeah, I think I would give the slight edge to Leary here. The thing I'll say, yeah, it felt very Leary-esque, but if it's not Leary, it would probably be like a Leary light almost, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think who would be similar to Leary, but maybe, you know, lose the series. I think in like some of the qualifying players like Sebastian or Vinchester, I think yeah. Sebastian Vinchester could be decent. Um, uh, it's interesting to see some of the, I, I, we clearly made a change. We've got like stuff going down and up. I guess it's percentage wise. <laughs> so if we have more votes fly in for one, it's going to affect some of the others. It's cool to see how this is live updating, but 50% uh, of viewers for Hidden Cup 5 think that was Leary that went down, but others think could have been Sebastian, could have been Sato. All right. Well, I mean, all possibilities I think that's for sure. a solid guess. Yeah. So that's a solid guess. I don't think Sebastian or Sato have been voted in at all yet. We only have one more series. Um, we have to vote for who Jan Jishka is, though, because Jan Jishka just beat Leary. Who, who beat Leary here today, folks? Now, we Leary had Hera Leary. voted that in was before. The first guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we had Jan Jishka, uh, or sorry, we had Kazra voted as Viper yesterday. We had like Bosco de Gama on day one voted as Hera. Um, Tato was already voted in as well. So, like, those are the three players who I think would maybe be the highest on people's lists. Very possible we saw one of those players here and we were wrong in the earlier days. What what are your thoughts, Ornlu, on who Janjushka is? I think it is Hera or Viper. Um, it's it's a little hard to tell between the two, especially uh, as it was still that more macro defensive play style with amazing unit control. Very few mistakes from Janjushka this series. If yeah. Janjushka did have a weakness, it's that there were times where he was out multitasked, but that doesn't feel like Hera or uh, Viper. But maybe yeah. against Leary, like they could try and make it happen. It, it's a tough one. I'm going with Sato. I'm going with Sato. I think the island's preference. I think the landing. I think that the, no offense, Sato, if you're watching. I think the big lead on Bay into throwing the game with a forward castle. <laughs> Again, sorry, Sato. Sorry if you're listening. I think those are very Sato things. Sato's really good player. And he also tends to play in towards a lot of eco on on arabia style maps um there were just there was a lot of instances where i felt like the investment didn't match the situation on in some situations on the losses for Janjushka. so i would have leaned more heavily towards Sato. i can easily see why people would say viper or hera because of how good Janjushka was and uh i mean Sato beating leary would be a pretty big thing too so uh apparently it is the Viper. And thank you, guys. Thank you. Finally, we, it happens. On day four, it happens. Can we please see the people's predictions now, production? Can we see what the bracket has looked like? Thank you. Okay. There we go. Final set yesterday. People were pretty damn certain it was the Viper against Hart. And apparently, apparently, Viper <laughs> also played today and beat Leary 4-2. So... Thank you very much, guys. I was truthfully expecting this to be something like uh, like two or three Vipers, two or three Haras, maybe like two Tatos. So we did a really good job, but finally it happened. We said it would happen, though, Ornlu, because we've just been missing like that extra crazy player, and that's exactly who Jan Jishka was. Absolutely. And we had just such solid play from Jan Jishka. They are, whoever it is, it's going to be somebody I think that can go all the way in the tournament. I think there's no question about that. But it really yeah. makes things interesting because there's still two players we haven't seen. And that's, of course, going to be uh, the, the final set coming up. That's going to be interesting because most players, I think, people in their minds have accounted for. So I think, is it going to be a surprise coming up or is it going to be oh, this is clearly like, say, uh, maybe Yo or Sebastian that people didn't expect at this point. Yep. And also, we make jokes about there being two Vipers. Obviously, there's not two Vipers, so we're wrong there. But guess what, guys? I think a lot of us are wrong on a lot of our guesses. I think this is confusing. 
I think that some of these players could be multiple people just depending on the day. I think we could have had Viper losing in the first round as maybe Gregory the seventh, honestly. Uh, maybe Viper was Sumanguru. I mean, the list goes on and on, and that's what's so exciting right now. As everywhere I'm looking, I'm seeing community trying to guess, trying to scheme on who people are. Uh, but these are the actual results, okay? This is what actually has taken place. Uh, and it was Vasco da Gama, Sumanguru getting the win in the first day, Otto the Great and Gajamata getting the win on the second, King Steven, and then Kozrao getting the wins on the third. And then so far today, Ornlu, we've just had that Jan Jishka victory over Alfred. Uh, our final series is going to be Alexios Komnenos and Robert Giscard. But uh, Ornlu, thank you very much for joining for the cast, my friend. It was a fun time. Oh, yeah. Always is, man. And thank you so much for having me on. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity. And uh, yeah, hope hope everyone enjoyed because uh, there is a lot to enjoy in this tournament.